water. Earth. Fire. Air. The false Avatar Yun and his destructive campaign of revenge is at an end, brought down by the true Avatar, Kiyoshi. But the delay in locating and training her, as well as the disastrous actions of Earth Sage Xian Zhu, have left the Earth Kingdom weak and vulnerable. Bandit groups known as Dao Fei vie for power and territory, and even the citizens behind the walls of Ba Sing Se are not safe. Remnants of the Fifth Nation, a Southern Water Tribe pirate group, and the Yellownecks, a particularly brutal outlaw organization, still linger in the shadows, waiting for the opportunity to strike. With the Earth Kingdom in disarray and Kiyoshi needing competent allies to help restore balance, who will answer the call? G'day, I'm Brandon. I'm playing Kiko Mu, uh, water bender from the Southern Water Tribe, and I'm just looking for a good time. Hello, my name's Andrew. I'm playing Jed, the disgraced airbender. Hello, my name is Archie. I play uh, Ted, the airbender. I'm traveling with my brother Jed to assist Kiyoshi in her fight. Hi, I'm Bree, and I'm playing Lily Hana from the Earth Kingdom, and she is a small child who gets in trouble. And I'm Owen, the dungeon master of our Avatar Legends campaign, The Legacy of Kiyoshi which starts right now. Hello there, lovely listener. This is just a warning to let you know that this episode of The Legacy of Kiyoshi may contain adult language or adult themes. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello! Hello! Hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is like the equivalent of six scenes in a movie. Um, greetings, <laughs> one and all. Welcome to our Avatar Legends uh, Legacy of Kiyoshi campaign. This is our episode one. If you're joining us for the first time and you haven't seen the episode zero, don't panic. It's okay. You don't need to. I think you should, because it's going to be loads of fun and it's a really cool episode, but you don't need to. I'm going to do a full introduction, get us all up to speed, and we'll be jumping back in really, really shortly with the uh, the players for this campaign. We've got everyone here joining us tonight. It's going to be a really, really fun session. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time and haven't seen the, uh, the episode zero or the session zero, we're going to be doing a Kiyoshi campaign, which is taking place after the uh, Rise of Kiyoshi and Shadow of Kiyoshi uh, books, which are incredible. Um, Hopefully you have enjoyed the new intro. Um, the map that you see there uh, is a map that I have created for the Kiyoshi era. I've adapted um, uh, a map created by a, a really incredible map maker on Incarnate, um, who put a lot of effort into creating a really good world map for Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, but I figured that we wanted to have our own map. Um, so the, the artist was Good Name Real. <laughs> So I have adapted his work and created this very hyper accurate Kiyoshi era campaign. It will be up on ArtStation for anyone to uh, to use if they'd like to. Um, and we will be uh, referring to it throughout the uh, throughout the sessions and throughout the uh, campaign. And if that's the only contribution I make to the Avatar fandom, a really hyper realistic world map for Kiyoshi, then I'm happy with that. That's that's not a bad legacy to leave behind. Um, fun announcements to share. Uh, the only fun announcements I have to share is that uh, we should be welcoming our first guest to the stream next week. I'll have the announcement for that coming out very, very shortly. Get excited. It's a mystery who it is. No, no one knows who it is. <laughs> Keep your mouth shut. Um, and we'll have the character art ready and, uh, and up as a, as a YouTube post very, very shortly. So we'll be announcing our first, uh, our first guest spot uh, pretty soon. You realize we were live on Twitch when you announced it. Exactly, like, but the best bit is, but the best <laughs> bit is, that's all been cut out, and so no one ever sees it. So it's all perfect. So all the people in chat right now know. That's all right. Snitch, I trust them. Snitches. Snitch chat. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, snitches don't get an Avatar One campaign. Is all I'm saying. Uh, so <gasps> yeah. yeah, dragon, watch yourself. Your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and Archie's like, who's one? <laughs> Because you don't know who that is, do you? Avatar One. I I was asking. For That's the, the one we wanted. That's the one yeah, I you're, wanted. You're you don't know who that is. Though. Yeah, I know that. That one's gonna go for two hundred episodes. He's number one. <laughs> He's number one. Um, does the guest know? The guest does know. <laughs> so we'll be Should having be, that announcement. Come on down. We, yeah, sure. If you come on down, we'll be we'll be having that announcement very very soon. Um, the only other fun thing I have to share is um very very keen to watch the fallout tv series um i'm obviously a big fan of fallout started playing fallout um when fallout 3 came out loved fallout 3 love fallout new vegas fallout 4 when modded with a whole bunch of really like awesome mods fantastic um the sim settlements 2 mod pack if you've never played with sim settlements 2 you need to go back and play fallout 4 now with sim settlements 2 it makes the game 
like S tier. It's fantastic. Like it's so good with the with Sim settlements in. It's basically like Sim City to do all of the settlement building, and there's like a reason to do it. There's a whole like plot line with the gunners. You unlock new technology. It's so good. It, it's incredible. It's basically like a, it's better than all the DLCs that they actually provide. So if you haven't haven't played that, you should. Um, but very very excited to watch the Fallout TV series so far. Like I know it only came out a couple of hours ago, and so far it looks like the reviews are pretty positive. So I'm really excited to see that. Um, yeah, I just, I'm just really excited. I know I'm a, I'm a big Fallout fan, so I'm, I'm I'm really happy that we get a a good TV adaptation. Archie's got his hand up. Yeah. No, he's um, not gonna. Hi, Dad. I was wondering, because um, Fallout is your favorite. Uh, what was your thoughts on uh, Fallout 76? Uh, yeah, I um I actually bought a PlayStation and Fallout 76 bundle because I was really oh. excited. And um, I've played maybe three to four hours of Fallout 76 and it's still up there on my shelf in mint condition <laughs> because it just wasn't that great. Bongo, bongo, bongo. Is my, yeah, I, I like it just, it just wasn't, it just wasn't that great. Like I, I've heard some what? people say it's worth coming back to now and they've done a lot of work on it. Um, I just don't have it on PC, so I haven't been bothered. I'm waiting for it to like go on a humble bundle sale or something, and then I'll give it a shot. A proper shot. I wonder in the TV show, does the war change? <laughs> <laughs> no, war never changes, Brandon. We know this. Oh. It's a fact. Um, so no, that's uh, that's. Uh, I, I am very excited to uh, to watch the Fallout series. So I'll, I'll be I'll be giving my uh, giving my update on that shortly once I've watched all like however many episodes there are back to back. Seventy six. <laughs> Out. maybe look if we get enough seasons that'd be awesome um that's the only fun announcements i have to share other than we are really excited to to jump back into the campaign um obviously Yay. archie had to <laughs> obviously archie had to uh to run away at the end of the last session um just before we we sort of did a little bit more with characters so i'll do a little bit of a recap to get uh, to get archie back into the zone as we as we get into yeah, the, yeah, um, for me. yeah exactly um and right on cue uh hello mims welcome it's lovely Hello. to see you. Uh, Mims is another person I am desperately trying to twist her arm to come and take this guest slot below me in a future point. The problem is Mims is about as busy as I am, um, maybe more. Uh, so <laughs> I haven't been able to uh, to find a slot yet uh, where I can uh, I can book Mims in. But it's there. That's you know that's yours there, right? Like whenever you want it, it's just there. Let's um, do it. Not that character. You can any character you want, and you know it comes with character art. I will make you character art. Whatever it takes. Um, oh, I, lo I love the animated. I, I love your animated emotes. They're so good. Fantastic. Oh, I love them so much. That's all the characters from the Metonia Blues, uh, Metanoia Blues uh, campaign, which is fantastic. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it so much. Um, alrighty, let us do our recap, and then we can jump into our episode one. So, to get us back into the into the vibe to get us back into the uh, the story. I've got a little bit of a recap and then, uh, yeah, we'll jump straight back in with the characters. The false avatar Yun has been struck down and the world now knows the name of the true avatar, Kiyoshi. But the delay in locating and training her, as well as the disastrous actions of Earth Sage Jian Zhu, have left the Earth Kingdom weak and vulnerable. Bandit groups known as Dao Fei vie for power and territory. Even the citizens behind the walls of Ba Sing Se are not safe. Remnants of the Fifth Nation, a Southern Water Tribe pirate group, and the Yellownecks, a particularly brutal outlaw organization, still linger in the shadows, waiting for the opportunity to strike. To help maintain order, Avatar Kiyoshi has spent the last three years establishing a special strike force in Ba Sing Se, Earthbenders sworn to hunt down and capture violent criminals. But when duty called Kiyoshi away, Earth King Yi Ming seized control of the force and twisted them to serve his own ends. Disillusioned with the political games taking place in Ba Sing Se, Kiyoshi and her partner Rangi have moved out to the Okoya Peninsula and have begun rebuilding the town surrounding the ruins of the Avatar Estate. With the Earth Kingdom in such disarray, Kiyoshi is searching for allies who can assist her in restoring balance. Four of whom answered the call. Ted and Jed from the Air Nation, Kiko from the Southern Water Tribe, and Lily from Ba Sing Se all arrived at the Yokoya Peninsula at the ruins of Avatar Mansion and met with Rangi, curious to find out what opportunities might lie in the service of the Avatar and her followers. 
After taking a bit of time to get to know Rangi and to get to know one another, the team made their way down towards a Dao Fei known as Wong, one of the members of a group known as the Flying Opera Company, who they were told had information regarding a nearby town which had sent out a call for help from nearby settlements. We left off last session as Ted, you rejoined Jed, Kiko and Lily as they made their way down towards the tents, uh, the Daofei tent. The tent, as I described last time, is this, it's very, very large, clearly enough to hold about six or seven people comfortably sleeping. And you can see that there are numerous flags of various colors strewn about across the poles and along the uh, guide wires that hold the tent upright. As you approached, and Ted, you caught up with the, the three others just as they were approaching the tent, you can hear the uh, telltale signs of someone singing opera badly. Very badly. And as you approach the tent, and I think uh, I think Jed cleared his voice at like, <clears throat> the end of the last session, the voice suddenly stops and you hear from within, Hello? Hello? Are you the people I was supposed to meet? Please come in, come in. Take, take but a moment to admire, and then you may step inside. And that is where we left off last session. So for those who didn't join us for session zero, you didn't miss a huge amount, just a little bit of character development and, and getting to understand the characters and their playbooks. So as we jump back in, what would the four of you like to do? Hmm. I'll, uh, I'll go up close to, to, to Jed and be like, this guy shouldn't... Uh, this guy shouldn't quit his day job. How loudly are you saying that? Just for my benefit. Just loud enough for him to hear. Just for just for Jed to hear, or yeah. the occupant of the tent. <laughs> <laughs> Jed, okay. If he was really look, listening out, he could probably hear it. Okay, cool. There's no there's no other sounds apart from someone clearing their throat and they hear, ma 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 ma, from inside the tent. Lily, have you ever seen or heard the opera before? It's Poppy. Um... I mean, Poppy, that's right, sorry. <clears throat> so, for the, for the benefit of everyone listening to the podcast, <laughs> um, Bree's character, Lily, has used a fake name. Uh, a, it's part of her background, and, uh, and B, it makes a lot of sense, narrative-wise, for a young girl to not just give out her name to random people she's just met after fleeing the criminal organisations that uh, Rule Bar Sing Say. Um, and it's also fun to fuck with that one. Thanks for that. Thank you. Fuck you. Um, yeah, so she she has... The characters think her name is Poppy at this point. Look, I haven't seen, like, that kind of opera. What kind of well, opera, actually, opera have you seen? Lily, <laughs> Lily, given that you have spent some time in Bar Sing Se, and given that you've been around <laughs> Dao Fei organisations, could I get you to assess a situation for me, just to just to see if you do recognise anything about this this group, this company, or if there's anything else that you might pick up on, just out yeah, of interest. Surely I wouldn't have heard bad opera. Uh, it's a miss anyway. Um, a five is a miss. Yeah, no, I, I mean, opera is not really something that the poor folk in the lower ring of Barsing say get to enjoy. Um, plays and puppet shows, hundred percent. Oh yeah, puppets. I mean, the puppets They're are considered creepy. generally the yeah the creepier the, the creepier art <laughs> yeah. form. Puppets um, are creepy. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna really I'm gonna really ruin Archie's day. They're not proper puppets with strings. They're hand puppets. That's even cooler. Oh no, and okay, just... that backfired. Oh. <laughs> backfired <laughs> instantly. Really backfired. Um, yeah, so the, so you, uh, you would have you would have seen like performances and things like that, but yeah, not not opera before. Yeah, fair. Um, yeah, I'll stick by what I said. I haven't seen this kind of opera and then whispering very loudly, bad. Yeah, it sounds a little bit like that right now. It's opera, pretty cool, smoothy, top blast people, a little bit pretentious, but just go off the flow. Just go to their ego, you'll be fine. I feel like, I feel like his ego is so inflated. That's why he sounds like a dying helium balloon. Oh. You're right. Anyway, uh, who wants to take the first step in first? I'll take the first step. <laughs> Ted, <laughs> as you step inside the tent, it takes your eyes a moment to adjust, but the sight before you is a very lavish, gorgeously laid out tent um, held up by two central poles 
uh, which have been adorned with what look like hooks containing various costumes and outfits, as well as a number of weapon racks at the back, um, but not fitted with real weapons. These are clearly like stage props and and other, um, like you, you can see that like they're made of foil and balsa wood essentially. In the middle of the room is a large table, a map of the surrounding area laid out across it with a number of little flags jammed into it. You can see leaning over it is a man probably in his late 50s, looking portly is the word I would use to be polite. Um, dressed... Chonk. Chonky. Yeah. Grotund. Dressed, rotund. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say grotesque. That's brutal. No, he's not grotesque. <laughs> uh, uh, like, and and he, he is like a, a very... Like very well put together man. He's wearing very fine, gorgeously uh, looked after robes. You can see that they are um, embossed with this beautiful embroidery around the edges, this gorgeous emerald green with golden embroidery around the edges and the sleeves. And you can see that he has the hints of makeup, a bit of eyeshadow, a bit of eyeliner. You can see that he has lipstick on to make his lips look a little bit redder. Yes, Lily. Um, shout out to Foxtrot Fallout for saying he thick in all capitals. <laughs> Thank you. Dad. Three C's. Three <laughs> C's really important there. Um, Sounds like a thick rizzler to me. And as the as and as the gentleman turns around, you can see that he has very very short cropped hair, dark short cropped hair, brilliant emerald green eyes, and a very friendly face with a very small goatee on his chin. And as he spins around with a big smile. He bows very graciously, one hand held out, and... Ah, welcome, Wong, the flitting Sparrowkeet. And you are? Ted. Kiko Mo. Airbender. Waterbender. Oh, good, got some more benders. Good, good, good. And Jet. you too, Jet? I'm not in the tent yet, I'm... Just hanging out outside. No, no. God damn it. <laughs> well, you can come in the tent if you want, no. <laughs> well, um, it is wonderful to meet all of you. Uh, I assume uh, you're here to join the Flying Opera Company. I look at Jed. I must, I must say, it is quite fortuitous that you, uh, we have two, well, one airbender and his companion joining us. Uh, we are currently without a flying bison. Um, so we are at the moment the walking opera company, but if you have a bison, uh, that would once again restore us to our rightful place, soaring across these cerulean skies. Uh, fresh out. They, fresh I'll, out. I'll, it could be good for you guys. Like, you guys are airbenders. Like, I'm pretty sure opera and air go together pretty well. Like... We, so we were, in that, fact, founded by an air nomad, so clearly our organization has its roots in, in deep, honest spiritualism. And gold, and gold, and bison. taking gold from people, taking gold and precision from yeah. but, but more importantly, deep, profound spiritualism. All this gold and can't get a flying bison. It's, I, are, you, are you saying that you would be able to locate one for sale? Perhaps is what is what are you saying? I think I don't think it goes against any Maybe? Airbender rules to sell bison. Uh, Ted and does. Jed, Ted and Jed, you know for I a fact it... that the bond between an air nomad and their sky bison is a special, <laughs> sacred thing, um, not to be sullied by the handing over of, of worldly possessions. That is uh, something that does not happen ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, I mean, Ted, you're not a disgraced air nomad. Yeah. Jed, you are. Even you yeah. know, Jed, that that is a soil, a stain upon your yeah. honour that would be very hard to wash out. It's pretty hard to come by. That's all. I don't think. I. I, I don't think we'd find one. Ah, oh, well, that's. That is a shame. I shall have to wait for Kyoshi to provide me with another Sky Bison for our prestigious organization. She is a Swan member. Just out of curiosity, how many Flying Bisons have you lost already? No, we have not lost a single Flying Bison. We had one Flying Bison and then Kyoshi had a Flying Bison. And obviously Kyoshi, well, it's not really hers, but she's still... We had a Flying Bison, but unfortunately it only was with us temporarily. We were not its owners at any point. We were merely partners, you could say. Partners on the stage for just one act. Cut short too soon. 
So you named yourself after one act? Oh, no, 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 our founder. She had a sky bison, but when she passed, uh, her bison returned to the Emerald Hills, snow-capped peaks of the Northern Air Temple once again. Yeah. How so, was that? When? Oh, many years ago. Um, would have been almost ten years ago now, maybe longer. Oh, you guys have been running for ten years. Oh, no, we've, we've, we've been around for... Ooh, a bit longer than that, almost 20. We are prestigious, long-lasting, it, yeah. founded at the change of the Avatar cycle. Deep roots within this island here. Oh, tell. no, we've only been here for uh, a few months. Uh, Kyoshi insisted our, um, we had many strongholds back in our heyday in Ba Sing Se. Uh, for the last little bit, our, our group has been working out of uh, Chameleon Bay, but, um, when the Avatar calls, her loyal Dalfei must answer. So it was Dalfei and the flying opera. God. Are they the same? One so, two? So, so we, we are the flying opera company, and we are also, uh, that is our Dao name, Fei. but we are a Dalfei. We are a, um, an organization that works outside the parameters of the law. Ooh, okay. We find the law restrictive. It is. Preventing true freedom. And we believe in... See, I, I told you, air nomad philosophy is deep at our core. Pick it up what you're putting down. How much gold's in it for joining this organization? Oh, depending on the jobs. I mean... De- if you were to, as much as you can carry out of any one location, my friend. <laughs> Depending on the job. Um. Um. Yes, G- Jed. Right Jed, was it? Yes. The mission we were sent for. Oh, well, we better first get you uh, get you all sworn in uh, so that you can uh, uh, you can join. And we'll have to sort out your face paint as well. Make sure you are all mission, appropriately mission done up and. What, what yeah. was that, sorry? Mission first. Where's Daffodil? Daffodil? Rose? Rose? Um. I'm gonna poke my head in the curtain. The name's Poppy, you old fart. Poppy, Poppy. <laughs> it would have been funny if you said Lily after that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I could go through the aspects of the of the task at hand, but um. It won't leave much time to go through the 54 oaths. We don't want your stinking oaths. Give us the damn mission. Ah, you remind me of Kiyoshi when she first came to join us. Cool. Mission? Uh, Lily, could I get you to... I guess this would fall under an intimidate or a plead. Your choice. (laughs) Intimidate, intimidate. But I don't. What's Which better, better, passion or harmony? Well, I have a minus one to harmony, so absolutely not doing that. Intimidate. Ten. Woo! I'm a scary little bitch. <laughs> yeah, but what about in the game? <laughs> um, Wong, wow. Wong kind of freezes for a moment, and then he watches his smile kind of falters a little bit, and he sort of... Almost a little tear comes into his eye, which he just wipes away very dramatically. Ah, I fear our opera company, our Daofei organization, will be lost without new blood to join, but... Ah. Ah. And then looks to see if there's any reaction amongst you guys, seeing if you're into it. I'm just staring at him very forward. No, okay. I think less sympathy than before. Ah, oh, okay, cool. He, he kind of like, <laughs> he kind of shakes his head and like shrugs off and goes, Oh, very well, okay. Um, nearby settlement, Koru. Um, said something was wrong, a uh, missive somewhere here. Uh, there it is. <clears throat> uh, fingers assaulting in the night, taking grain. Avatar, please help us. Well, Avatar's very busy, so, um, you lot, should you go and take a look, pop on over, have a little peek. Did you say fingers at the night? Figures. 
Finger the oh, Knife. Oh, Fingers. Okay, cool. I was Fingers confused. Fingers of the Knife. Hand. Yeah, I was, I was creeping out by <laughs> holding hands. It's, the, it's, the early, it's the early um, Dai Li. They didn't have the full stone hands. It was just stone fingers. And they just like come up and like wriggle across the ground and take stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, mean, I was ready to excommunicate over myself from that mission, but I'm in now. Back in. I just thought it was like a reference to like sticky fingers, like. No, fig, fig <laughs> figures, figures. That's the new I'm speaking with my healthy. northern dialect again. <laughs> figures in the night. Oh, we should have said. <laughs> I can I can take on many characters to help you understand the, the, the words and the missives that we must work through. Um, yes, um, so I imagine Rangi has uh, given you a very small briefing, no information on supplies or resources or things like that. Yeah. Now on the head. Well, um, uh, we are not as flush as we uh, used to be. Um, obviously, working in the service of the Avatar has limited our opportunities to take things which belong to us after the taking has occurred. And um, mm-hmm. I, I, I can offer you a cart. Some, some food, a barrel of water in the cart, a uh, tent, as well as some, some supplies of that nature, tinderbox and things like that, a lantern or two, and a, um, well, an ostrich camel to help pull it. You have like a wheelbarrow with like two wheels? A wheelbarrow? Ah, oh, I remember. We used Ooh. one of those in one of my famous stage plays. Uh, was a performance not soon to be forgotten. Um, I was a younger man back then, a bit more mobile. <laughs> I'm sure I could I still squeeze into it. the old wheels barrow if I needed. Would love we were all barrow. thinking we it. Right away. <laughs> Straight away. <laughs> Dave's not here, though. Is a wheels barrow. Yeah. <laughs> Dave's not here, and I can't. It breaks my heart. Um, well, I, 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 I mean... I'm not sure if we still have the wheels, Barrow, but a cart should fulfill your purposes nonetheless. <laughs> we'll make a wheels, Barrow, and we can come back. <laughs> Did you, um... I, now that I've explained the briefing and you understand what's at stake, I mean, uh, surely you would like to join the ranks of the Avatar's most elite fighting Next, support sorry, gotta force. Go. Bye. Without the yeah. Opera grab Company, them all and pull them out. the false you avatar that would never have been taken down. Oh. As you like run out of the oh. tent. Without my special bending techniques. <laughs> I was saying done. back like, I'll talk about this with you later. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you get uh, to the edge of the tent, uh, there's a sudden pause as you realize you don't know where this cart supplies or camel ostrich are. Um, mm. Mm-mm. Can I assess the situation? Yes. No. Is in my casing the joint? Yes. Can absolutely. I look for this horrifying creature? <laughs> How do you know it's going to be horrifying? I, I sent a picture and it's horrifying. You sent a picture? What? Not to you, but. Uh, check Discord. Check Discord. chat. How did yeah. you already have a picture of a, of a camel ostrich ready to go? Yeah, that's I a camel Google ostrich. That. Yeah, that's horrific. I Googled camel. I googled ostrich camel and that's you know how I worse? Got it. my description's more horrifying than that brace yourselves <laughs> uh, eight success with consequences lily okay as you, as you, so um, chicken i get to low. ask a question from the assess situation and then also a question from case in the joint no. um okay well pretty obvious where can i see a hideous beast called an ostrich camel uh, as you have a bit <laughs> his name's Ted um, there's uh, Ted is short for the ostrich camel it's shortened to Ted make it easier um, as, you, as you look around Lily you can indeed see hitched only a few paces away in front of a, a small hitching post with a, a little barrel of water and a small um, small pile of hay you can see a very large bird-like form. It has the legs of a camel, the body of an ostrich, and then the neck and head of a camel with the ostrich plumes coming out the top. Um, But rather than the camel ears, it has the ostrich ear holes just on the side of its head. Is it? Pitched up to a cart. Two legs. 
Okay. It's got two camel <laughs> legs, yeah. the body of an ostrich, <laughs> and then a camel neck head, <laughs> but then ostrich ears. And do you know what? Just for fun, it's also got the beak of an ostrich too <laughs> on the camel head. And that's what you see. Wonderful. Yeah. I think we've broken Andrew. Uh, yeah, pr- basically the second image in the Discord, Andrew, is uh, pretty much what I was describing. That's it exactly. <laughs> oh, God. It's pretty okay. bad. Okay. So that's where the stuff is. Did he tell us where we need to go? Uh, all he said was the village name. Would I know that village? Do you want to include that as one of the questions from your assessor situation? Sure. You've never heard of the village of Koru before. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, whatever it is, it must be a very small settlement. Backwater, I mean, s- street kid living in the... Uh, the lower district of Barsing say, your geography is not going to be impeccable. Mm. You've got no idea. No idea at all. Archie. Can I try? Sure. Uh, an air nomad who's just flown in a stolen bison or a borrowed bison. Uh, who You're you totally going to know the surrounding area. Ned. I'm like better than you. Let's Am see. I rolling? Uh, assess that would be them. assess. Actually, this is a push your luck for you to know this. Yeah. This is a push your luck. Because I was thinking, like, maybe I walked past it on the way or something. He's he's celebrating hard. It must be a good roll. Uh, seven. Seven. That's the success of consequences. Ted, you've not heard of Koru before, but it does sound like it'd be north, right? <laughs> You're on a peninsula. The water's behind you. If you head north, maybe there'll be a sign for it. Better than uh, Dandelion knew. All right, guys. Uh, craps over there. Where the crap are we going? North. Sick. Based on? Uh, air. Um, air wisdom. Brains? The yeah, wisdom of sure the winds. <laughs> uh, just like general air nomad uh, wisdom that you wouldn't understand because you're just a kid. I think he's bullshitting right now, I think. You know, I have a really good feeling that you are 100% correct. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Do you say that in character? Sure. <laughs> All right. Um, so I guess we head wherever this weirdo thinks we should go and we hope to God that he's lucky. I'm pretty lucky. Uh, Does anyone want to go back there and ask him I'll, where? I'll go back and ask. Okay. I think we're fine. Just, I'll be quick. Well, and you I'm can already extend. turning and jogging. You have until I count to 20 and then I'm pulling you out. Okay. How far away are they behind me right now? Oh, like 10 metres? Pretty far. Okay. <laughs> 10 metres? Yeah, each step you take is just under a metre, mate. It's like 12 steps away. 11 steps? <laughs> are you are you heading back to the tent keeper? Yeah. Cool, okay. like, as, hey, as you as you as you rush back in, you can see Wong is currently running out of the tent with a, a scroll that's been rolled up. He goes, as he almost collides with you, he goes, Oh, who oh, my boy? Oh, <laughs> um, you need a map. You don't oh. know where you're going. Crazy. That's exactly what I was gonna ask for. Thank you. Now, um, I nudge which, Daffodil. Way. Does, does it have a north, south, east, west on this bad boy here? As you look at the map, you can indeed see that it is a small local map. Um, in the far southeastern corner of the map, you can see the town of Yokoya, uh, which is where you guys are now. The map extends up as far north as the very southern uh, tip of the uh, uh, Siwong Desert. Uh, so it shows a fair bit of the Yokoya Peninsula. Uh, and a little bit, it doesn't quite show Omashu, which is sort of up in northeast, probably just due north of where you guys are, actually, as you look at the map. But um, the, the area map that you have uh, does have north, south, east, and west marked on it. And as you look at the Yokoya Peninsula, you can indeed see that there are two villages that stand out on the map, Chin Village and Kinchao Village. It seems that it is just a little bit south of Chin Village and Kin Chao Village. The settlement isn't marked on the map with like a proper icon or logo or anything. It's just a very small collection of like houses that have been hastily drawn on separately. And then a dotted path showing the road that you need to take. 
That's a good end. Here, south of there. Okay. Oh, no, 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 south. No south. South ocean, as he points at the edge of the peninsula behind you. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, sorry, I thought it was... Like, on the map, you, was it south of so the village? And so we're that? here. We're here. You want to go okay. north, a little bit west. And if you if you get to Kinchar village, you've gone too far. If you get to Chin village, sure. you've gone too far east. Okay. Too far east, Chin village. Too far west is... We can just okay, got it. Out. I got it. I got it. This he is hands cool. you the map. Cool. <laughs> I, got, I, I got this. I got a memory like a like a horse. Like, oh. Don't worry about me. I Are they? This. What's a horse? The horse. Uh, like like a cat. Like a, oh, cat horse. Like a. Why would you make it horrifying again? Cat horse. They're, <laughs> they're the ones that. Uh, they're the ones that have. Uh, Nine uh, nine riders that they have to buck off before they can be ridden properly, don't they? Watch. Jesus Christ! And they're, the, they're the ones that you actually uh, they run up trees and stuff like that. It's really yes, cool. they're horrifying mounts. Uh, they're they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends who you ask, really. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna take this to the guys. Here they hunt this. people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they do. <laughs> uh, before I go, uh, if one was to join the flying opera singers sorts. Do you yep, have on to, that note, the flying you have to, 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 do you have to sing to join and the big drag? As, <laughs> as they drag you up onto the cart and you guys take off with the camel ostrich. Um, who, I mean, who's who's driving the camel ostrich? I guess that's the question I need to know first. One of the old farts. Oh, Ted boy. or Jed, you've been volunteered. Shot. Oh yeah, you guys can do it. Shotgun. Boulder, okay. Ted, uh, I'm going to get you to give me a skills and training role because technically this is not too dissimilar to uh, getting a flying bison to uh, to listen to your instructions. A what? Flying bison? No, no, no. What's what my skills, skills and training, training mate? <laughs> Rely on your skills and training. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh! He's really happy again. It must be a really good roll. We got to we got to give it like a sec a as it comes prank. through. He celebrates so soon. Thirteen. That's the maximum I think you can oh, roll. <laughs> to be honest, I oh, know it's almost the maximum. Um, yeah, I mean, Ted, you're you're pretty good with animals. Um, when you were when you were growing up, a bit bit mischievous with your uh, with your brother Jed, the two of you would sometimes be uh, punished by going off and having to to muck out the stables of the sky bison and feed them, and and that's given you a bit of a bond with the animals. And and this creature while a lot more horrifying than the uh, sky bison that you're usually used to dealing with you, you get the sense that it's similar to help to help get this creature to, to run where you need it to run and as you pick up the reins and go yep yep and flick the reins it takes off uh, at first at a very slow kind of trot but then picking up until it's at more of a, a very disjointed kind of run as kiko is dragged behind you hear um calling out from behind you wongo no, 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 that's a cover for the illegal activities. <laughs> as you begin running, uh, as you are dragged onto the cart and taken running off down the street. As you pass oh. through, yeah, Ted? Sorry, I have a question for God. Um, in in the last session, uh, you wow. said that all your creatures are beautiful. Uh, do you still stand by that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the great thing about being, how did you put it? god is that i can say whatever i want whenever i want and that's always been the truth from that point onwards and in the past so yeah there's they can both be both beautiful and horrifying exactly it it is not is not beauty also horrifying and it's not horror also beautiful think about dragons dragons are really nice majestic things but they're also like terrifying if you get up close yeah but not dragon (laughs) <laughs> Not talking about the person. I'm talking about the mythical beast, you sucker. Uh, as you guys uh. take off running through the remains of your Koya village, so it's, I, I should I should rephrase again for those of you who are joining us for the first time. So the village that you guys are currently in, it looks like there are two parts to it: an older fishing village, which has clearly seen better days and is ramshackle, and then this newer construction occurring around the ruins of an enormous mansion and estate. The newer construction is running, it's, it's going really well. The further away from the mansion it's taking place. People are putting in loads of effort constructing new houses, constructing new buildings, and for earthbenders that's a pretty simple task, right? But the closer the workers get to the manor, 
the slower they're working, the more reticent they look. Uh, there's even a sense of fear amongst them. And as you rush down the main road, uh, you see a, uh, a younger man pushing a, a wheelbarrow full of cabbages who has to dive to the side as you guys rush past. Ted's very expertly handled uh, uh, reins, expert hands on the reins help to avoid a collision. Only one cabbage falls off the uh, the, the wheelbarrow and uh, drops onto the ground, which the uh, camel ostrich plucks up as it runs past and with a chomp chews it in half, sending cabbage spraying across the ground and flying back into the faces of you guys who are behind. Uh, you hear from the ground, my cabbage, as you shoot past at high speed. Is that Leaving... a reference? What was that, sorry? Is that a reference to something? Nah, nah, oh, nah. Cool. don't worry about nah. it. Nah. Um, just having fun. Uh, yeah, as yeah. as you leave the uh, the town of Yokoya behind, you can see Ted and Jed, your uh, your monk friend, taking off on the back of their sky bison. Um, as they fly down low, the monk gives a, a wave uh, over the side of the saddle to you, and then, with a yip yip, rises up and disappears with the clouds high above. The road which you travel on has been very well maintained, despite the thickets on either side, the underbrush reaching across trying to make its way and claim the road once again. Clearly, earthbenders have put a lot of time and effort into keeping this road smooth and easily accessible for people in carts or with wagons. It's not really a bumpy or jolty ride at all, apart from the occasional jolting as the uh, camel ostrich uh, misses a step or does like an extra big jump or an extra long step. You find yourselves watching the countryside fly past quicker and quicker as the ostrich camel picks up its pace. Farmland is one of the main features you notice of this area. Small farmsteads with large open fields being tended by citizens of the Earth Nation. A simple life, but clearly a rewarding one. This land seems fertile, seems to be very well looked after. In contrast, Lily, to what you have heard inside Ba Sing say that the Earth Kingdom is currently struggling with blighted crops, that the Avatar should be doing more to appease the spirits. But here, the world looks beautiful. The farms look fertile, and it's hard to believe those stories and rumours that you heard from inside the walls of Ba Sing Se. Before too long, the road that you are currently running down splits into a fork heading in three different directions. The ones to the left and right far more main road kind of appearance. You can see that the roads are wide, clearly well trodden and have been used very, very frequently. The road to the north is not even an, a worked stone road. It looks like it's just been this rough hewn earth that takes off through a patch of small woodlands, uh, trees rising in the uh, on the hillsides beyond. A sign marking the directions reads Chin Village to the left, uh, Chinkau village to the right, and to the north, Koru settlement. That's what you see. Uh, the only thing I'd add, I'd add as well is that you can see coming from the direction of Chin village, uh, you can see a man with a very large backpack on his back with a flag coming out the top of it. Uh, the flag is orange and red and is waving in the wind. The backpack is easily as tall as he is. And you can see him struggling under its weight as he makes his way down the road. Probably maybe five, ten minutes away from you guys at his current pace. We say hello to this mysterious backpack gentleman. Point him yeah. out on the road. Yeah, you can call out. I mean, yeah. I, I'm assuming to, to read the yeah. sign, Ted kind of pulls the uh, the ostrich camel yeah, to a bit of a out. stop. Yeah. Can I assess the situation? Yeah, you bet. Kika, are you just going to call out, hello, friend? Yeah, something like that. Right. As you call out, hello, you watch as the figure raises his head and you see a, a younger man. He looks to be maybe in his 20s, maybe 30s, young 30s. Very rounded face, no facial hair to speak of. Bright uh, red eyes, very these like bright uh, orange red eyes. Very clearly Fire Nation. Um, and as he gets closer, you can see the flag on his back shows the traditional reds and, and uh, oranges of the Fire Nation flag, but rather than the symbol of the current ruling family and the ruling uh, leader, the Fire Lord Zoru, or his clan, um, 
Although, what would Kiko know about Fire Nation clans? Rather than these symbols that you recognize or see as traditionally Fire Nation, you can see that this flag has what looks like a large purse has been stitched onto it, like a coin purse, basically. Um, Lily, what did you get? A four, that's a miss. Uh, there is nothing nothing to read into in this situation, nothing more to see. But it's all looking good. I still get to ask you still the, case get your, the, case the joint question. What's the most valuable thing on him? Uh, the backpack looks like it's full of valuable stuff. It's hard to, hard to say more than that, but I mean, this guy clearly looks like some sort of trader or some sort of merchant. He's going to have good shit in the backpack. We all know that. Although you would also know, Lily, that it's considered very dishonorable to fuck with um, the wandering merchants. Although, m mostly because like people who did that often would find themselves being hunted down by the Dao Fei that those merchants might work for to help fence stolen goods. Although this guy, he, it's unlikely he's a member of an Earth Nation criminal group. I mean, he's clearly Fire Nation, as Kiko points that out to you guys. As the figure looks up, you watch the big, broad smile strikes his face. Hi! Hey! Give me a moment! I... Uh, <sighs> tries to like pick up the pace a little bit but it's not very quick and after like two or three minutes of him walking towards you being like having to call out and gradually being able to drop his voice like hey i get in there oh this thing's heavy <laughs> you guys you guys want to buy Back stuff do you? you could take some stuff out <laughs> oh. well, i, was, I wasn't oh running whether you were doing weight training or selling but now i know the latter yeah, yeah no no um Member of the uh, the newly founded Merchants Guild, we're very excited to be bringing uh, items of, of of beauty and and majesty to the Earth Kingdom. Um, I've got a I've got a walk from here up to um, up to Passing Sake, so uh, hoping I can get the backpack a bit lighter before then. <laughs> uh, and the smile falters for a second before coming back. So, what can I what can I interest you guys in? What uh, what sort of stuff are you looking for? I've got pots, I've got pans, I've got ancient priceless relics stolen from the moon itself, and I've got some charcoal here if you're trying to like make ink or something. Ooh. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got I've got I've got a few got a few scrolls. Um, not bending scrolls. I don't, I don't know if you guys are benders. Everyone always asks. I don't know mention scrolls. Everyone's always like obsessed with bending scrolls. I don't know if you bending scrolls. As if the Fire Nation's going to have bending scrolls from other nations. <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't go into other people's places and take stuff that's not ours. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, I mean, obviously, it's like spoils of war, right? Like, you know what's happened with the Camilla Peony war? I've got loads of good stuff. Do you have any shovels in there? Because I feel like you were digging a hole there, brother. I <laughs> have a shovel. Like, you wouldn't believe. As he takes the backpack off, he, like, unclips the side of it and pulls out a collapsible shovel. And he holds out the haft, uh, the, sorry, the shaft, and then the metal shovel that aren't, aren't joined together. And then he puts it in and goes, ta-da! What's it made out of? Uh, wood and metal. Oh. You, could, you can um. interchange it with a pick. He unscrews the shovel and then puts a pick head on. Yeah? Uh, or... Uh. Ah, uh, for my waterbending friend. Ha! Huh. And it's an ice pick. But the shaft's way too long. It's like a full shovel length shaft with yeah, a tiny yeah. ice pick head. <laughs> Ta-da! I nudge Kiko. Okay. That'll go good in the bar that we're gonna set up at one point. Hmm. Um, gonna, like, I don't have any grab... money. <laughs> I'm gonna grab Kiko oh. and like pull oh. him aside quickly. Do we have money, Dad? Uh no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do not. <laughs> the Air Nation especially do not have money. That's just like, yeah. <laughs> so 100% you don't have money. Um, yeah. Kiko and Lily might do though, but uh, Ted so, and Jed, nah, man. As Kiko's like, I don't, I'm going to like grab him and like pull him to the side, like turn away from the traveler person. Oi, you got any money? Like all this crap? Kiko and Lily, could I get you to please roll me a, I'm going to say a push your luck and whatever the number you get for push your luck, that is how many silver pieces you currently have. Oh. But the uh, Ted and Jed, the Air Nomads, uh, you can also roll a push your luck and that's the level of spiritual contentment you feel by not owning <laughs> things Ooh. of material value. So the lower the oh. better. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh shit. Yeah, that's an eight. That's an eight. Uh, you feel you feel pretty content right now. I mean, I, I rolled a twelve. You rolled a twelve. You feel great contentment without without any. I mean, you don't need physical possessions. All of this talk of money and things like that—it's just a distraction from the enlightenment one can reach without the 
horrible influence of, of worldly possession. Did, did Avatar Yang Chen not promote peace and harmony and a distributed financial system involving no actual financials? Um, oh, I didn't read that book. Oh, you would have, 100%. Um, <laughs> red taxes if there are none. Kiko, six. <laughs> Lily, is that a four? No, I rolled a 12. Oh, I can't that see falls yours. from my previous roll. Oh, that's all good. I can't see yours. Yours doesn't come through, but that's okay. I'll um, I will trust you. So you have 12 silver pieces. Makes sense that well, you would have 12 silver pieces. Kiko, you've got uh, six silver pieces. Yeah, I've got a bad passion stat. I'm not yeah. passionate. <laughs> Mine's plus one. Nice. Um, negative one. <laughs> so you guys, you guys do have some do have some silver pieces. Okay, so I've pulled Kiko aside. Wait, you got any money for all this crap? Yeah, man, I've got like uh, six silver pieces going on here like that. Um, yeah, yeah, I spent a lot before I got here, you know. You know okay. Offers. <clears throat> Hear me out, that? right. Do you, can you see where his coin purse is on him? Can I see where his coin purse is on him? No, oh. it's not visible. He doesn't have it strapped to his belt. I mean, this guy wanders the countryside selling stuff for a living. There's no way he's going to have his coin purse just out and about for anyone to try and pickpocket or steal. And and more than that, Kiko, you, you spend some time in, uh, with soldiers. Soldiers would hide their money in multiple spots to make sure people couldn't steal them. There's no yeah. way this dude's just got one centralized spot where all his money's yeah. kept. Lily. Given this, given this dude's like merchant and like military background, sort of looking at him, like he's probably got some in his boots, probably got some in his waistband. Might have some like in a breast pocket, so we have to like knock him out if you want to try and you know. Do you have casing the joint? Just out of curiosity. No, not anymore. I don't. I've got different things now. Did you oh, did, did you, you change, change your playbook? did you change your playbook? Yeah, I changed my playbook to, oh. uh, to update you. I'll have to update it on yeah. the uh, on the. So, yeah. Got different things, and I've got. Uh, I don't know if I'm meant to have this one. When we leveled up, we, we weren't meant to get extra moves, were we? It was just another. You were allowed to pick uh, one more move. Yep. I was able to pick one more move for leveling each, up. Each person got to pick an extra move as part of the level up, a, a specialized either bending or a specialized uh, technique for your fighting style. Okay, I've got to remove... I do have casing the joint, I might remove that because I've also got Onzu, Pippin, up a lock on top of us the third. Yep, fantastic. <laughs> Bonzu, okay. Pippin, Paddle, it was Pippin, Poppin, Paddle, Lapsidopolis. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take the word on that. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> I'm Bonzu. Pippin pops another up and up and up and I failed. I failed. I fell apart. Oh, sad. Sad day to be me. Um, okay, so I'm going to just really quietly to Kiko so that no one else can hear. All right, so hear me out, right? Here. You keep him busy showing you that stupid shovel shit. Like, ask him multiple times over. Like, show him, get him to show you how to use it, how to pull it apart, how to... You know, you like keep him busy for a bit. Can do. Yeah. I might have a look around. Yeah. All right. Give you a little. I'll, I'll give you a little fist bump. Just like a little. Just like. Oop. Yeah. All right. Um. So I want to use bad habits. Obviously. Oh God. Yep. Uh, but because I'm indulging a bad habit with a friend, I shift my balance towards friendship, which honestly probably doesn't help me that much because it's shifting towards zero. Um. And I'm going to roll with friendship to see how I go with pickpocketing see it let's let's see it seven excited. seven as you reach into his pockets i mean currently this this man is is showing off the incredible interchangeable heads of the different picks although actually with the with the air nation members would ted and jed be uh looking for anything in particular I, i'd be like just looking at the stuff just seeing what there is and just like, yeah, like hands of... hands behind our back because we can't buy anything anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's like currently arms, showing you off like, like pie show tiles that he has, which like, are very beautifully like arms made. Crossed, but just like interested in everything he's showing us, like yeah, like seeing what's different out there, stuff we haven't seen before, probably. Well, uh, we have we have here some some pie show tiles. If you were looking Ooh. for some for replacing pie show tiles, uh, we also have here some uh, some very very lovely. Sorry, that wasn't his voice. It was a bit. Yeah, that's right. So we got some we got some really lovely sort of pieces here as well as he's going through. And then at that point, Lily, you just kind of just just, just <laughs> a little hand go in and just quickly feel around and quickly pull out what you find. Uh, Lily, as you pull out this object, you can see that it is small. About the size of a uh, of a closed fist, wrapped in a cloth that has been tied up with some string. And as you quickly that sounds valuable, you quickly take it, tuck it into your pocket. You think, hmm, heavy. 
Hmm. Okay. Felt a bit hard too as you sort of like grabbed it. Something a bit with, with solid edges. It's a picnic bar. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, because uh, we pulled it off, um, Kiko and I grow a little bit closer and we each make the other inspired. So you can mark inspired. Very nice. Our first heist. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to join one of the Dao Fei groups? Lily, this is very Dao Fei behavior. I mean it for myself, not for them. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, while you're doing that, Ted and Jed. The merchant gets the end of his wares and then seals up the backpack again. So, what can I get you? Anything, uh, anything of interest? I do have uh, some uh, rather more... And he, like, looks around. There's no one there. There's just farmland for, like, miles around. Looks around and then leans in conspiratorially. I do have some more sensitive items that I um, acquired from the uh, recent shenanigans in the Fire Nation. I lean, I lean back and be like, what shenanigans? Well, <laughs> you know, of course, the Sawan clan and the Fire Nation are no more. <laughs> Made a bid for the throne and, uh, well, gone. Whole clan, one of the most powerful in the Fire Nation, wiped out overnight. I saw an opportunity to um, access some goods, which they weren't going to need anymore. And, uh, well, let's just say I've been enjoying selling them to uh, collectors and those interested in that sort of thing over here in the Earth Nation. What'd you get? I have here looks around again and then reaches into a breast pocket in his cloak and then pulls out a gorgeous head crown. Uh, one of the ones that's meant to be worn by Fire Nation officials mounted into the top knot. This one is very, very beautifully made. You can see it even has a few gemstones marked in it as well. And interestingly as well, it also has a flower symbol in it as well. A, a flower that you don't immediately recognize. Absolutely. It's a lily, is that what you say? <laughs> it's a puppy like me. <laughs> looks looks like a uh, looks like an interesting flower. Here we have one of the uh, one of the head crowns of a uh, rather important member of the Sawan clan. Ooh. I know. Ooh, indeed. So, what do you think? I think it's very pretty. Well, anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there um, nothing, nothing else? No. But, uh, like, it doesn't suit my collection, unfortunately. Ah, uh, fair. Fair. Well, is there anything else I can help with? No, no. Uh, wait, where are we go going, by the way, guys? Um... It's south of uh, Chin Village, uh, a little bit south of that other one. On the map. Like, on the map here, like, I'm sure I'll show, show the map that was sort of going here, like, sort of down around this way. I don't suppose you know where this little area of these little houses here is it, man? Uh, ooh. Hmm. Can't say I recognize this place, but th this is Chin Village. That's, that's behind me. I've just come from there, and um, if you're... It looks like you need to go north, I would say. Yeah, you north. Need to go north. Yeah. North. That's right. He did say not south, north. South is ocean. He did say that. No, that that's that's bad. That's bad. Right. How how is Chin Village? Is it a cool place? Um oh they're Ah, uh, they're a bit uptight. Ah. That's not fit for anyone. <laughs> how are the what sort of people live there? Like are they like is it like farmers over there? Like Affluent people. Yeah, it's a bit of a mix. Of, bit of a mix of farmers and uh, it's the Chin Clan. It's their main, um, their main uh, stronghold. Uh, so it's all all family owned. I think uh, not great with outsiders. Must say, not very friendly. Maybe we won't stop by there. No, I I wouldn't bother. This has been fun. We're gonna hit the road. Sorry to hold you up. No, no, no. 
no problems. Uh, if you see me again and you have gold to spare or items that you need moved, uh, <clears throat> I can uh, can help you out. Just look for the flag. Got well, down like if I had like a little pen somewhere, I'm scrolling in the back of the map that little flag of his when I turn around. Yeah, first. And you, my good friends, can call me Beetle. And he bows before you once again. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Beetle. No problems. Is there anything else I can help with? Let me know. Well, I better get this psychic <laughs> backpack on. Let's <laughs> gotta <laughs> keep on going. As he begins making his way down the road once again. Is he going the same way we have to go? No, no, no. It looks like he's heading. No, uh, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's just heading due uh, due east at this point, along the other. Main oh, okay, road. cool. I just know really? that we, if we have beetles on us, he's going to attack us for them. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, it's a good question. Are beetles also hybrid animals in uh, the world of Avatar? So, for example, like, would it be like a, rhino a rhinoceros beetle is actually like <laughs> it's a tiny beetle with like an actual yeah. like rhino head and like rhino legs? <laughs> Who knows? I guess we'll find out. We'll have to ask. I think okay. from from memory, it looks like only vertebrates in the world of Avatar are hybrid animals. Because um, there's also like normal fish too. I think it's only like... I think it's only vertebrates and uh, mammals at that. Mammals, mammals and birds. Are, yeah. Can you ask Mr. Avatar? Can I ask? Mr. Avatar? <laughs> yeah. Can, I? Can you send an email to Mr. Avatar? Um, it's Mrs. Avatar. Thank you very much. Actually... I'll find their contact details. Yeah, I'll find their contact details. Give me a sec. Jesus. Oh, this can only go well. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you guys jump back on the cart. Ted, you once again take the reins. You guys have been making your way north. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. So, um, so uh, yeah. Poppy, what did you get? I pull it out and just take a little, like I undo it and I just take a little, little peek inside. Yeah, it's charcoal. It's been wrapped up very carefully to stop it staining his pants. Ooh. Um, can make ink now. Ooh. Charcoal. <laughs> what a great find you had. Hang on, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Charcoal can be used to make black powder. Lily, you're a weapon mm -hmm. specialist who specializes in bombs. Yeah. <laughs> you would know charcoal is very, very useful for a lot of your Especially things. Especially since uh, one of my moves is smoke bomb. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you've just gained one of the most vital ingredients to be <laughs> able to uh, to continue making your explosive surprises. Uh, so I, I would say for everyone else, it's like, oh, what is it? Uh, oh, it's charcoal. Lily's like, yes. <laughs> just fist but pumping I, I the air. I won't show my excitement. Oh, you know, it's... Uh, can make it's ink right. out of it. I'll, I'll hold on to it. Um, you know, it might it might come in handy eventually. Some of the some Should of the ladies who work in the um, the red flag district of Barsing say would often use it as eyeshadow. <laughs> the red flag district, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah I, I want to walk down there, but I just see a lot of red flags, man. I don't yeah, want to go. Exactly, a lot of red flags. <laughs> um, as you guys continue making your way north, the dirt pathway, the compacted dirt path, dirt pathway is a lot less comfortable to ride on than the main highway that you had been enjoying previously. And with so much overgrown vegetation and brush on either side, Ted has his work cut out for him, keeping the ostrich camel on track and preventing it from just kind of wandering off into the brush to taste all of the delicious greenery on either side of the pathway. It doesn't take too long though, maybe a couple of hours of, of walking down this pathway, obviously not as fast as you were on the main road because the dirt pathway doesn't allow for as much speed before you can see a small hill rising up the pathway, almost curving up towards the right and then heading down over the top before curving to the left. And as you make your way up the small hill, nestled in a very small valley, almost like a small hollow between two of these hills, you can see a very small settlement, maybe nine or 10 houses in the central town district and then a couple of farmhouses scattered out around it. There's a very clear a uh, very well-maintained uh, sawmill that is uh, using the water coming from a small creek running down the hill to to power the main blade, which is currently working at cutting through some logs being processed through it. The nearby forest, you can see there is a couple of logging cabins set up, workers in traditional Earth Nation uh, greens and, uh, and browns working away to harvest the wood from the forest. 
And in the center of town, you can see some kids running around, uh, a few mothers uh, walking about, sort of catching up with their kids, chatting and they, uh, as they swap uh, items that they've picked from their farms or from their gardens uh, and planning out the day's meals and, uh, and activities as well. And the town of, uh, or the settlement of Koru sits before you. What would you guys like to do? Hmm. Hmm. We're going to find out who's robbing this place. Hmm. It's a good question. Kiko, as, I mean, as you say that, this place doesn't look like it would have much to rob. This is a, a very, very poor Earth Nation settlement. That's because it's already been robbed. Can I assess the situation? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Can we assess? Yeah, yeah. yeah can Kiko I? and Lily, absolutely. And uh, Ted and Jed, if you want to as well. I got a miss, but I will ask who here is in control. It looks yeah. like one of the mothers who's currently uh, down in the village square talking with uh, three of the other women and uh, and a father who has a has his kid on his shoulders. You can see that the others are very much deferring to her. She looks to be in maybe her 60s, maybe late 50s. Um, there's definitely a lot of respect that the others are showing her. Even even from this distance, it's very clear that as she talks, everyone stops and listens. And when they talk, she stops and listens, but occasionally steps in with advice or, or with words, and everyone immediately defers to her judgment. Um, Ted? Nah, nothing, nothing going on there. I mean, this is... Looks these good. people need more meditation. Um, Jed7, what question would you like to ask? I'd, I'd rolled without thinking of a question. Um... That checks out. Does <laughs> Kiko does Kiko have a question? Because Kiko gets two. Do you want to ask your questions, Kiko? And that might help help Jed with his questions. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Already thought of mine in advance. <laughs> Big brain, right here. Uh, I'm going gonna, gonna to insight check that. Uh... <laughs> uh, sorry, you roll a one. Um... <laughs> okay. Wait, um... I get to decide what the rolls are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go on, what's your questions? Um, do I see from looking at the town, like, are there many? Okay, this that would be two questions. Are there many people walking around the streets, like hanging around? Yeah, there's the a few there? people. Um, you can see there are mo- mostly kids and uh, and uh, I'd say kids and parents, clearly like looking after their kids. Most of the people seem to be out either working for the lumber yard or working with the sawmill. Um, there's a few people kind of wandering around. There are two people dressed in very very slipshod haphazard armor we're talking like very very homemade uh leather armor that they're uh that they're wearing clearly some sort of guards but kiko man you're a water tribe warrior from the southern water tribe you're from wolf cove you could take it easy easy all right um actually i've just did you just message michael dante on Facebook. Um, I messaged them both. Cool. I was about to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, just have to just have to quickly highlight. This is not a joke. This is not a drill. I'm pretty sure Archie just messaged Michael Dante and Di Matteo as uh-huh. well. Yep. Yeah. To yeah. ask them yeah. to ask them what was the question you asked them? Do you want to share the question you asked them? Do you want to read the whole message out? I think you should read the whole message out. <clears throat> Good evening, sir. I'm a part of Avatar The Last Airbender role-playing game that gets streamed every week. We had a question about the creatures of the Avatar universe with the hybrid creatures. Would all creatures be hybrids? For example, beetles and fish or just vertebrae? Thank you for your time. (laughs) (laughs) I hope he he brings it up in some sort of like interview on like a podcast or a radio show. It's like, what's the weirdest question you've ever been? I was like, fucking weirdo called Archie. Just like... Message me out of the blue one time. <laughs> okay, but really, like, what's the worst idea. that's going to happen from him doing that? He doesn't get a response. Like, I love yeah. it. Yeah. No, it's fantastic. Look, I love I it. Only find, I, uh, you could have uh, name dropped the name of the stream, but no, man, just. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want them to come watch us. No, 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 no. no, no, no. He's only, he's got an Instagram. Message him on Instagram with the uh, name of the stream. It is on Instagram. Is that Instagram? Yeah. Because oh I can only find Instagram and Facebook. No one, uses, no one uses Facebook anymore. Yeah, that's fair. I couldn't find a Twitter or anything. Also, no, no one's on Twitter thing. anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's all now. They're all on X. Oh, you're actually messaging. <laughs> I was joking. Oh, no. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, Kiko, what were your two questions for the love of God? <laughs> okay. So first one, one is people going around the town, yes. all that sort of stuff. Um, is there like a building of importance? Like is like a town center, a place for a mayor or something to live in there? Like um, any of those things? The houses all look pretty similar. There's not one that stands out as like a manor or as, as maybe more of like an official town hall no buildings stand out. There is a very small town square around what looks like a well and you can see that a couple of stone benches have been set up in a flattened area next to that. You get the sense that's the official meeting space for the town. This is a very small settlement. I want you to picture maybe 50 people live here including the people in the nearby farms and settlements. Maybe 60 at tops. This is a tiny settlement. Okay. Alright, this is good. This is good. Alright. So I've got this map. All right, guys, we have to go in here and we're going to have to like do a bit of detective work. Has anyone done any detective work before in the past? Question of the locals. Just all blank stares. I mean, I wouldn't really call what I do detective work. That's good. That's good. But I can talk to people. Perfect. We're going to have this nailed down here. Okay, so I've got like my map. I'm going to flip my map over. Do I have like a bit of wood or anything like that I can use something on those lines luckily Lily has some charcoal Lily perfect can I who borrow can I oh Poppy, Poppy. sorry Poppy can I borrow a little little bit of, little bit of charcoal just a little bit of charcoal only a little bit a, a little bit's fine just I need enough to like scribble a little bit sorry it has to be barely legible okay I hand you the piece of charcoal Perfect. Okay, sweet. And then I don't have a tree around me or something like that. No, that's not going to work. Don't have anything. I can, I, can, I can write on this anyway. I'll pull it out. As if, if I was to write on the back of this map, will it like handle me just with a bit of charcoal? Like, yeah, so you think you th the, the map is the map Perfect. isn't like a paper per se. It's more like a um, uh, imagine like a very very thin sheet of, of leather or skin that's been bleached to to give it a much cl clearer sort of like cream white appearance. You can write on the back. That's not a problem. Here, let me help. And I like turn around so you can put it on my back. Amazing. Down a little bit, but <laughs> all the way down. <laughs> like, all right, this is gonna be great. <laughs> That's it. Okay, cool. We're ready for our questions. If anyone asks, I am a detective from Kyoshi Island. Is that where you came doesn't from? Exist. Not, Kyoshi no, Island, Kyoshi Kyoshi Island. Island. That's doesn't right, exist. Doesn't exist. Yeah, do not need. Not yet. I was trying to, is it um, not the Dai Li, the Dao Fang? Is that what we're part of? The, no? I can't remember the name of the organization. I've got a terrible memory. <laughs> we're not a part of any organization because we haven't we, signed up. Oh, we haven't signed up. You might want to be a part of one of them, but we aren't <laughs> yet. But we can say that we are. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, as long as you believe you're alive. Just name drop. It's fine. It never gets anyone in trouble. Yeah, that's one thing. I like, just say part of the uh, death hang will be fine. It'll be fine, no problem. I'm sure that no will be problem. fine. I'm sure that they aren't the people actually stealing from the town. It's probably fine. Yeah. Lily, you would know that the Dao Fei is a collective term for criminals, bandits, poachers, uh, generally yeah. pretty bad people in the Earth, the Earth Kingdom. Um, the Flying Opera Company like working with the avatar are, a, are an exception <laughs> a real <laughs> exception um because it okay. is a spectrum right like Dao, Dao Fei is kind of a word used to describe organized crime in the earth kingdom so Mouth it's like saying like hey it's okay i'm a mafioso <laughs> 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 um probably probably okay. want to be you, you would know that the best way to get yourselves uh let's say chased out of this town with pitchforks and torches is to walk in and go, hey guys, I'm from the Dao Fei. <laughs> I'm here to help. Hey, I'm, both, I'm with the mob. <laughs> Give me some information. You're going to lose your windows or your shot. <laughs> those are some nice kneecaps Please. you got there. It'd be a shame if something happened to those kneecaps. <laughs> well, I was going to... I was wondering with the name of Avatar Kyoshi's, um, what do you call it? The organization that was sort of trying to get into. The Flying Opera Company. Oh, okay, so that's what hers is as well. So she, oh, okay. she joined that. So she she doesn't. So at the moment, Rangi kind of said two different names to you guys because, like, th this is the early days. You guys have joined essentially the first draft of what will one day become the Kyoshi Warriors. 
Um, obviously, from this experience, she learns that A, men aren't to be really, they're not the best to be in involved. B, you need them to be trained by her. <laughs> they can't just be randoms who rock up. So she learns a lot of really important lessons from you guys. From us. Yeah. Which is going to be this campaign. <laughs> no so, spoilers. So because of the, uh, the Kyoshi Warriors came around. So uh, I, I probably wouldn't call it, because Rangi sort of used that and you, uh, Ted, your exact comment was, that name won't stick, I'm not using that. <laughs> so you can if you want to, but um, I think you guys agreed, like you were you were just going to say that you were working for the Avatar or you were Team Avatar is how you guys kind of jokingly called it. Yeah. You can also say the, the place you just came from, the Yokoya Peninsula, you could just say you're from Yokoya. That would be fine. It's a neighboring village. It's not... I mean, Lily, you would know that it's not unreasonable for people to just say, here, I'm here to help out. I heard you guys were in trouble. I'm from a neighboring village. What can I do to help? Jed. I have my question. Oh, I'm oh, ready. Oh, here we go. Finally. He's thought about it, so it's going to be fucking good. You ready? Everyone. It's been a 20 Shut the fuck up. Listen to his question. I'm ready. Uh, looking, at the, <laughs> looking at the surroundings of the village, Yeah. does it look like any area like has been impacted, like where people might have come and gone from? that don't look like workers, like that aren't workers using it at the moment? Jed, that is a really good question. There is a very strange disturbance in the rock and stone and earth in a curving arced line towards one of the houses at the back of the village. You can see where this, I mean, if you didn't know any better, it looks like someone has like raked a whole bunch of rock and stone in a line towards this house. It's disturbed earth underneath. Maybe huh. someone with a hoe or a shovel. Or... Could you call me? Or an earthbender. Interesting. Okay. I'll point to a Ted. Yeah. Over there. Snake. What? Uh, okay. The, the earth looks like it's been disrupted. Uh, from a shovel. More of a hoe. But like, it's not, nowhere else around here has it, so I think that, that that's kind of suspicious. Maybe it was the guy that we saw. I don't... I, he didn't have a hoe. He only had a shovel and pickaxe. And an ice pick. An ice and an pick ice pick. He could have had a hoe attachment. We didn't, yeah, maybe he didn't find out. To us I didn't there. see a hoe. That was the upsell. <laughs> that's once you've joined the multi-leveling marketing scheme like it's like basically like a tupperware club where like you get new models <laughs> that come out you get new attachments it's it's like it's this is the avatar equivalent of the thermomix right every six months they release yeah, a yeah. new attachment for your shaft <laughs> to put on. now introducing the pokey stick <laughs> for your shaft i hope yeah i want once attachment for a shaft <laughs> I don't. I, I'm just, just saying it's on offer. If you're, you, yeah, you're, you're, you're the one who seems really, you're the one who seems really interested. I'm just, I'm just letting you know that it's on offer. Um, I Spiral. would Spiral. like to wander off. Cool. And just I too. <laughs> I too would like to head towards that house by my like wandering off. I would like to go wander up to one of the women. You're gonna try and play and... the child card, are you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. I mean, I am a child, so why not? Exactly. Um, hi, uh, I'm new around here. Is this like a safe place to stay for a little while? As one, you watch as the uh, four women and the one man who's got the kid playing on his shoulders. The kid looks to be like maybe one and a half, maybe two. Currently like pulling on his hair and you can be going, ah, oh, no, 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 ah. <laughs> Tong, as it's kind of pulling at his hair. Um, as the women turn to face you and the man sort of like tries to like hold his child's hands free from his hair, he watches, pulls out chunks of his hair and then looks down in surprise at you. There's a, a pause and then a look of great pity moves across the faces of, of three of the women, but not the matriarch, not the woman who Kiko identified as kind of being in charge. You watch as a suspicious look gets in her eyes. One of the mothers, oh my, oh my dear, are you... Where are... She like looks around, but doesn't finish the question. Uh, I'm, I'm traveling at the moment. I'm trying to get to, um, how many I hear it's called Koya? Koru Village. 
Yakor. No, the the place we just came from. Yakoya. 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 Um, I'm I'm heading to Yakoya. Um, I heard that you know that's a good place to stay, but it's still pretty far, and I have really little legs. So I was wondering if it was okay to like stay somewhere here. Is there like somewhere like accommodation or anything here? And am I safe to stay here? You would tell me, right? As one of the women goes to answer, you watch as the older woman, the one in her 60s, holds her hand up. I um, I think it is best if uh, if the rest of you go about go about your duties. I will I will deal with our young guest here. Smiles at them. The women and the 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 mothers and the father immediately smile, or shoot another pitying look down towards you, Lily, and then make their way off. Um, you watch as the, the matriarch sort of smiles and waves and then she gets down on her knee, places a hand on your shoulder and looks at you. She goes, all right, you little shit. What do you want? Wow. Um, I just wanted somewhere to stay. No, you're here to rob us. I'm not an idiot. We've had so many of your types coming from Bar Sing say, we're sick of it. What do you want? I wouldn't rob you guys. You guys look poor as fuck. Thanks. <laughs> Hasn't stopped others though. Wait, who's robbing you? Who thinks that that's a good idea here? Assholes. Who else? Now, are you with... Ah, oh, this is too coincidental for you to arrive the next morning after another attack in the night. Are you one of them? Are you one of their Dao Fei? Is this some plan to get us to, to let you in so you can unlock doors from the inside? It's not going to work. I wasn't born yesterday. Nah, uh, I'm not that silly. Um, actually, no, I'm on, um, an important mission from the Avatar. Um, I'm helping out the Flying Opera Company. So they actually asked me and some of my friends to come here and find out what's going on and who these hooligans are and help you guys out. So I was just wondering if you could help me out with some information, madam. That would sound ludicrous if it weren't for the fact that you just name dropped the Flying Opera Company. We sent a message to one of the Avatar's companions. Uh, yeah, we got it. Something about figures in the night. Yes. A, Fingering a woman, the night. A woman we specifically called out to. What was her name? If you know her name, I know that we can trust you. Rami? Oh, you were so close. Fuck. Close enough that you might actually know who I'm talking about. I, to be fair, I only just met her and she asked me to come out here and I'm kind of bad with names. We ask for help and she sends children. Oi, I take offense to that. And Why? That is a fact. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are there. It's just, it's just Lily talking to this woman at this point. Um, wh why not? That is not. Is that not a statement of fact? You don't know how old I am. How I old are you? I'm a grown woman, and you're being rude. I, I, I would be very surprised if you were a grown woman. Yeah, you would be surprised, <laughs> wouldn't you? I've got three daughters. I think I know what a twelve-year-old looks like. I look what, like I'm twelve. <laughs> she shakes her head. Your other companions, are they here? Are uh, they investigating? They, I think they're off like snooping and trying to figure out what's going on. But um, I thought it was just have, easy to ask. We have had suspicious people coming in and out of the village under the cover of darkness. Having strangers snooping is a surefire way to get them attacked. Yeah, I did think that. That's why I was like, no, we should go talk to the lady. And they all ignored me, but oh, here we are. I need to ring the town bell. She, you watch as she wanders over to the well. Don't move. She locks eyes with you and then heads on over and begins ringing the bell really, really loudly. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Kiko, Ted, and Jet. Um, from wherever you guys are, you suddenly hear the town bell ringing loudly and you watch as people look up and then begin making their way over towards the town square. Um, as they do so, you watch as the woman wa waves her hands and goes, no, nope, no, no. Nope. We have some strangers in the village. And then as she says that, you watch as all of them begin reaching for knives on their belts. Some of them like reaching for pitchforks in the field. She goes, no, no, no. They have been sent by uh, the Avatar's companions from Yukoya. Companions and investigators. Hi. Now is a good time to come out so that we know who you are and you are not attacked on sight. <laughs> This is a pause. As she hey, calls old out. man, cool dude, and brother. You can say hi to everyone now. Wait, wait, wait which wait. one's which? <laughs> okay, hang on. I think, I think Kiko might be cool dude because he helped you. Yeah, yeah, Kiko's definitely the cool dude. I'm pretty but sure Ted old is man, old man. And I, I think constantly Jed's refer brother. to Archie as old man. Old man. I'm younger. 
I know, but I keep calling I you walk, old man. But you're bald. Walk around the corner striding. I'm cool, dude. What's going on? I, I, I'm like coming up from where, like, from where the house was that has the trail leading up to it. Yeah. I like, I, I approach from that way. One of, one of the, one of the earth nation, one of the guys, he looks like he's in his like late thirties, early forties. As you, as you emerge, Kiko come up go like, yeah, I'm cool, dude. You watch as he like, his hand is ready. Like he earth bends down. And then as you like nod and say, cool dude and walk past, he like raises an eyebrow. <laughs> looks at you, looks you up and down and then shrugs. <laughs> As I walk past him, I go like, "Give me some skin, man." <laughs> I mean, like, you want my dude. skin? <laughs> God, no, no, no. Cool it's water tribe thing. Not your. As I'm walking past him, like now stopping to like, well, not skin, skin. Like, just, <laughs> just want to like, I grab his hand and forcefully. Gently like high five slash stroke it, and then try and do a fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> he, he does this and you watch as like as he looks down at his hand he kind of blushes a little bit and then uh, and he, he gives you a thumbs you take up that, take that chair that round around here it's a cool thing this down there this was invented this day <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna call it the boulder bash but yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, Jed as you emerge from around the back of the house Rushing out from inside, you see a uh, an older man, probably in his like seventies or eighties, with a uh, almost what looks like a guandao, a, a long curved blade on a spear. Uh, imagine like a like a curved scimitar, a little bit smaller, but mounted on like a spear. It's the best way to describe a guandao. Um, it has like feathers and plumes around the tip. And as he as he pulls it out and lowers it towards you, he goes, "You varmints, you're not getting into my oh, you're he, like looks over and goes." Oh, you're here investigating. Yeah, that, that that's us. Well, yeah. well, come on by. Have I got a tale to tell you? Sounds interesting. Horrifying. Oh, yeah. it'll, it'll make your toes curl and your hair fall out. Oh, well, we can't have that. <laughs> uh, Ted's fine. <laughs> <laughs> just nods. As the rest of you gather in the town square, people begin to go back to their lives. A few of them looking at you with a little bit of suspicion, but most of them hearing that you are the, the help that they've been promised. The chosen ones. The chosen ones. Um, looking very much happier to, to see you there. Um, with that, you watch as the matriarch, uh, the, the older woman, sort of smiles and nods and goes, okay, well, none of you are going to get stabbed, so that's good. Um, you right. roll welcome. Thanks. Yes, you lot. Thanks how is it? Me. How is it that a child has more sense than the three of you put together? Oh, we just got distracted. Yeah, distracted. Is this, is this not? This isn't your first time investigating such matters, is it? You've been you've been working for the Avatar for some time, right? So, oh, yeah, of course. Ages. Out, Look how old I am. My, I pull out my thing as I'm writing. Like, yeah, of course. Like, we're part of Team Avatar for a very long time now, since the beginnings, to be honest. Um, I'm lead investigator, um, Kiko. Ah, oh, um, lead investigator Kiko, you, um, I must say, I've, I've heard stories that the, uh, the water tribe use, uh, seaweed wraps to help, uh, keep themselves looking young, and I imagine you've been, uh, doing that for a while. <laughs> she looks at you and takes in how young you are, too. Yeah, nightly ritual, yep. Very important work down there. <laughs> Brush back a little bit of hair. Yeah, man. <laughs> keep yourself looking fresh. <laughs> keep myself some skin every now and then. If you want to give skin, you got to... Take care of your skin. <laughs> <laughs> ah, um, quite. <laughs> and uh, the rest of you, um, Team Avatar. I um, I like this name. It is good, Team Avatar. It, uh, obviously, with the um, the events of uh, the False Avatar, I think it is good to have people um, rightfully addressing our, our our true Avatar Kiyoshi. Um, so. Uh, what is your plan? I, I imagine you will want to investigate the, the scene, talk to some people who saw things. Um, well, my yeah, plan, plan was to ask you, yes. what do you know? Mm -hmm. uh, me, personally, I can tell you things that I have heard from my people. I can give you a lot of secondhand knowledge, but I imagine you're probably looking for first-hand accounts. I, I can direct you to the people who you need to talk to. Um, oh. that, that anything you know is anything that you know is perfectly fine as well. Like if you've seen or heard anything, like when did this all start? Uh, it started about a week ago. Um, was the first reports about a week ago. <laughs> um, people, um, 
some of the some of the uh, the uh, foresters reported seeing figures um, setting up camps uh, in the deep in the in the in the woods behind the the village in the uh, in the back section of the um, of the greenwood there. Uh, at first, we kind of dismissed it as uh, eyes playing tricks on them in the darkness. I mean, when you don't have a lot to do and you're doing the same thing day after day, sometimes a uh, bored mind can, can invent things, exciting things to see. And we hear all sorts of stories out here. Um, but then a few more credible people began to see things. And at first we wondered if maybe it was the spirits. Um, but, uh, well, about four nights ago, um, a number of uh, bags of grain were taken from one of the outlying farmlands. Then the next night, vegetables. Then the night after that, uh, uh, other supplies from closer and closer into the village. And last night, uh, they attacked um, Old Man Toka's house. Not Old Man Toka's. Toka. 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 Yes. Um, I mean, he was a member of the... Uh, member of the the royal guards back in his heyday in Ba Sing Se, but um ah uh, well that's a long story but he's out here now but it is it is well known that he he still has um his uniform and weapons uh, keeps them How safe he does. well um people have started to worry i have started to worry that maybe these people have been watching maybe someone inside the village has been feeding information out to them and maybe these people know that they can get guards, uniform, and weapons from his house. I can think of a number of reasons why a Dao Fei group would want that. Those reasons be? What was that? Sorry, Brandon? What would those reasons be? Oh, well, if you were a criminal organization and you wanted to get into places that you're not allowed to go into, looking like a member of the Royal Guard would probably help open some doors, no? Hmm. Take note. Can we, um, can we, like, set up some kind of area to interview people? Would that be okay? Uh, yes, of course. Um, guys, guys, do we just want to follow the tracks? Or he wants to go look at that? the bush. You, you, can, you can go do that, but I think we should set up an area and Mr. Kiko here... Brothers! ...can, um, have a chat and, um, figure out some interview stuff. Yes, yes, we need to question all the people in the scene. Um, who would be the people I should interview? Uh, well, um, it, it depends. Uh, if you, I think probably if you wanted the most um, creative account, uh, you could talk to Toka, the uh, old man who they went after last night. Um, he um, he took a head wound during his time with the, uh, the Ba Sing Se Royal Guards and there's a reason he's enjoying his retirement out here in the countryside and not in Ba Sing Se anymore. He gets excitable. Um, he would probably be the, the person who would give you the most creative account of what happens. Um, if you're looking for some of the foresters, um, I'd say probably talk to uh, Gime. Um, he is probably one of the more reliable people to ask. Uh, you uh, you um, d did a weird thing with your hands to him before when you were walking in, uh, in Special Investigator Kiko. Ah, yes. No, I taught him something very important today. So I'd love to talk to him again, see if he remembered what I taught. Ah, uh, yes. Well, he, um, obviously he is uh, uh, one of the younger younger gentlemen here, and um, he was one of the first ones to actually report uh, what he saw out in the woods. And he is rather trustworthy. Um, I, I found him to be a very reliable young man. Um, and if you're looking for people, uh, I mean, we have a spiritual uh, consultant, I guess is the word here. Lisha, um, she uh, she was the one who helped us understand that these was not spirits. Um, she she helps commune to the spirits on our behalf and helped keep these lands uh, safe. But she's not here at the moment. She she travels with uh, with one of her companions um, between a number of the villages here. I believe at the moment she's in Chin Village, but uh, hopefully she will be joining us tomorrow. If you were to stay the night here, if you'll have us. I, we can definitely put you up. I, I, I think um, given that these attacks happen at night and you uh, look to be uh, competent benders, that would be wonderful. Oh, what am I saying? You would, you do not need a spiritual advisor. We have a member of the Air Nomads here. Your presence here blesses us, enlightened one, as she bows. Namaste. <laughs> Namas, na namaste. What does that mean? 
Namaste the fuck away from our investigation. <laughs> oh, um... We need peace and quiet, please. <laughs> yes, um, I'm sure we can find you accommodation there. Uh, you, you can stay with me in my house. Uh, my children have all grown and moved on, so uh, it is just me there alone at the moment. Oh, where are my manners? Love, I am Zulu. Love games. It is lovely Good to meet you, Zulu. Zulu. Okay, so we want to talk to Earth Dude, yeah? Uh, uh, the old man? Talker? Nah, nah, nah. Skin man. Gimme. Yeah, skin man. Gimme. Uh, Mr. Gi- skin? Gimme. Uh, where can I find him, please? He's he's uh, wandering back towards the uh, forest. Uh, only like, he's just there. <laughs> she like points, and you can see the young man who gave Brandon a, a, a fist bump and a high five just axe on his shoulder, wandering back towards the uh, wandering back towards the forester camp. Is that in the same direction where uh, Jed saw the path? Yes, it is. So we should go that way. Like the half stone. Also, wait, okay, if it's created by earthbending. Did anyone else look like they were earthbending uh, when they rung the bell? There were a couple of people who looked like they were like getting okay. ready to earthbend. Yeah, it looks like there's a couple of earthbenders here. Not very many okay. ago, Jed, like from You're your You're in quick... the Earth Kingdom. Yeah. Yeah, but still, it's just asking because there's no, no, a it is a, it is a good question because it's not everyone. And um, it, yeah, it's, it's much lower numbers than like the air nomads, for example. Like most air nomads are also airbenders um water tribe as well it's probably i think it's about like 50 to 60 percent of water tribe members are are benders for the earth kingdom it's only about 30 to 40 i think it's it's one of the lowest from memory yeah just checking because like lame lame i could be wrong on that i am sure if i am no someone will let me know it's okay i'll message (laughs) (laughs) You, Um, you don't need you do not need to bother our esteemed and highly written no you are you don't need to do it Archie you don't need to bother him it's okay please don't you don't need to do it please don't I don't want to bother this man <laughs> that's I think you've asked a really funny question All right, let's leave it at that fine <laughs> <laughs> look as he throws him back I feel, like I'm, I feel like I'm talking him down for a fucking ledge <laughs> it's okay mate it's okay <laughs> His wife, like, just his wife's just like, come, come to bed, it's late. It's like, no, this guy The Lost Archives are asking me a very important question. <laughs> how many cabbages fit inside a wheelbarrow? And how many wheels until it's no longer a wheelbarrow? <laughs> um, I would like to point out that a very quick Google search told me that there is elephant koi. Yes, there are. But they're just so, really big koi. They're not a mixture yeah. of elephant and koi. They're just very large koi. Yeah. Um... Did she offer to set us up a table or anything for these interviews, like I asked, or...? Uh, she, she, she points to rambling. the stone... She points okay. to the stone benches behind you and goes, um, if you were looking for somewhere more private, you can, uh, you can use my kitchen table? Uh, I could bring... I could get one of the... I could get one of the young lads, one... You, young, young lad, uh, well, not in special investigator Kiko. Um, oh, yes. You... <laughs> Rather handsome man. She looks at Jed. Uh, you could, you could probably carry out the table and. No, Jed's just giving a very, very that. intense death stare. Wrong evils. I'm uh, sorry. I'm heading off towards the following the path. That's oh, you're just gone. Yeah, no, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just out. I'm. Brilliant, Jed. Um, as you make your way over towards the uh, the disturbance along the ground. Uh, Lily watches um, as the lady who you just spoke to, um, Zulo, uh, Azulo, um, heads on in, grabs out a table for you with the help of one of the other village, uh, with the, the dad who had the kid on his shoulders, he puts the kid down for a second, rushes in, helps her with the table, and then they set it up just inside the, uh, the town square here. Kiko and Ted, what are you no, doing? I'm going, I'm going with my brother. I'm Alrighty. Be, it's Ted I'm and Jade head protector. off. That's true. I'm a protector. As Ted and Jed um, head off, Kiko and Lily. What the two are you doing? Well, I think I want to kind of. Like, I don't know if I just want to set up like a an interview booth. I just don't think that's going to work. Like, do we just sit there and be like a little sign that says 
come in for an interview about crime. <laughs> I don't like, think any crime <laughs> happened. Changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking the Fire if Nation you, didn't change my mind. <laughs> if you sit at the table, then they have somewhere like central to come to, and I can go scout out and find the people that we need can, to interview you and put them in your them direction. To you. Shut up. Yeah, look it dead into your eyes. Do you have the glint of I'm going to steal things right now? Not currently. Yeah, there's nothing here to steal. No, 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 no. It's Let's be real. Out. You it's don't know stolen. well enough to know for sure. No, I don't. But I've seen what you've done before when we just did this. I'm like, you do what you got to do, but you find me people to interview. <laughs> gotcha. And don't get caught. <laughs> I skip off towards Gimme. <laughs> Perfect. As you skip off down the pathway, Jed and Ted take a little detour uh, over towards the left, leaving uh, Kiko and um, uh, Kiko and Zulo uh, together. Kiko, as you sort of sit down, Zulo sort of sits next to you for a moment and then looks at you and goes, um, "Sorry, should I be here for this?" Or oh. Do I- someone just sit down in front of me? Uh, the the lady is in her sixties and seventies. The 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 Zulo, the the leader of the town, or Zulo. So, so, did you did you still need me for this? Um, look, if you would like to be here, you can. But honestly, like interview stuff, it's honestly like better when you know you don't have the town sort of leader watching over you, talking about these things. You know how it is. No, that is fair. I will uh, I will go around and ask anyone who has information to come and speak to you. No, that'd be cool. I will um, pat my hands, sit here. <laughs> Do I still have water in my water skin? Am yes, I yeah, right yeah. now? Okay, yeah. cool. Split. There's I'm a good. well. There's a well right in front of you. Oh, sweet. I'm just going to go walk over the well, fill my thing up, and just come back and like, oh, do, 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 do. just waiting. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Looking around. Uh, we'll come back to you in a second, Kiko. Let's follow Ted and Jed first. Um, the brothers dim as you begin making your way over to it. Sorry, that's a bit harsh, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry. That was good. I like that. I really like awesome. that. I don't know where great. that came from. What the hell was that? Oh, that was so good. <laughs> so I, Damn, do you know what happened? Just- I just, I just sort of, I let my subconscious just control that for a moment while I was like planning out how the description was going to go for this next bit. And it turns out my subconscious is pretty annoyed at you two for what you've done. <laughs> now I have to deal with you two. What we've done? What we've done? I think, I think do. I'm still holding resentment for your character art descriptions, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Seated <laughs> resentment, and I'm gonna hold on to it. I'm I'm gonna let you know I'm a vindictive and generally petty person, so it's gonna it's yeah, gonna we'll express know. itself. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Um, as as the two of you make your way over to us, I think that's that's sticking now. The brothers dim. I'm gonna do something with that. Yeah, <laughs> as like the two guests. of you, it's good. As the two of you make your way over towards um the house with the the clear signs of what looks like at this point earth bending shenanigans going on behind it. Um, you begin sort of walking around the perimeter, taking a bit of a look. Could I get both of you to please assess the situation? Sure, Daddy. I think that's why I call you the Brothers Dim. Actually, <laughs> I, it turns out it turns out I, I, I just another notch was added onto the like, <laughs> the, the tally. One. Yeah. Plus one minus one. <laughs> so one. We both Jeez. fucked up so bad. That's a one. That's a three. Um, Ted and Jed. <laughs> someone was throwing some rocks about. At this point, uh, okay. at this point, <laughs> how do you even know earthbending was involved? Really, at this that point, someone could have done this. Someone could have done this with what? a hoe, or even yeah, a mattock. It was a, hoe. It was a mattock. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'd be an ice pick. Could have, could have been an ice pick. I mean, <laughs> actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a bit of a. You, I mean, one of the rakes that you had to use to to rake up bison poo from the stalls, they also had a um, almost like a bladed rake that was a bit like a cross between a shovel and a rake with really large. Um, three very large paddles or very large oh, blades. Strike. A strike. <laughs> um, one of these would do the job. Easy. Maybe, maybe someone was trying to get rid of bison poo. The way he said that, like so conspiratorially. <laughs> Well, because I always do it as like they're subconscious, right? And so when you fuck yeah. up on a roll, and I do this in D&D all the time as well, my favourite thing to do is like to answer people as their character's subconscious. So everyone, even if they make the same rolls, gets different answers some of the time. And so like if it's like a one, it's like, you're pretty sure that door just blinked at you. And then if it's like a 20, it's like, yeah, it's just a grain in the wood. <laughs> it's a really nicely made door. 
Ted. I think there's a bison around here somewhere. Well, I'm pretty scared about what this clip is. Is it Ned? Is Ned around? Is Ned around? Maybe Ned's up here and he's just left. Was, was I don't know. Ned heading back? Or maybe he got lost. Maybe it was the flying um, operas bison. The one that got lost. <laughs> the one that got lost? Yeah. Should we find it for them? Uh, maybe. Perfect. Um, let's jump over with Lily. Lily, yeah. as you skip merrily down the road, um, mm -hmm. a a young boy rushes out and stops in front of you and goes, Whoa, whoa, whoa! Where are you off to, stranger? Wherever looks, I want, what's it to you? He looks maybe 10. Well, you've entered... We can hear that, Andrew. <laughs> um, well, you gotta got to be careful. You've entered into the territory of the... Uh, of the bog rats. And he Is that around. what you call yourself? You stink like a bog and you look like a rat. You watch as oh. like you watch as he kind of like pauses for a second and goes Um Our gang doesn't have to listen to this. You better watch your mouth. Gang, there's one of you. There's there's always more than one bog rat. And he looks about, sniffles a little bit. Uh-huh. Where? Waiting in the shadows for the perfect moment to strike. Go on then, now's the perfect time. Come out, you lot. He like reaches into his pocket, throws some sand in your face and runs away. Fair enough, I keep going. <laughs> Thanks, kid. <laughs> and then carry on. Um, what a fucking weirdo. I rolled a random encounter and you got a tiny street gang accosts you. <laughs> so I was like, well, it's not going to be much of a gang in this backwater town. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was really hoping for some other options, but I was like, oh, we'll have Lily get a random encounter. We'll have Ted and Jed get a random child encounter. That I made cry. <laughs> it's all right. He's got an older brother. Um, Lily, Good. as you uh, pocket sand sandbender, we're here. As you, He's not a sandbender, though. He's, he just throws it. There's no sandbending involved. <laughs> um that's something I will share. There's going to be some really, really cool variant bending that you're going to see in this series. And one of them I'm really excited about, a variant of earth bending that I hadn't thought of until I read the Kyoshi novels. And now I'm like, fuck, that's incredible. Um, Lily, as you make your way, sort of skipping along, trying to catch up with um, with Gemi, wiping sand out of your eyes, which is, I mean, sand, sand's the worst. It's itchy, gets everywhere. You hate it. Um, you do eventually catch up with Gemi there. Brandon likes my references. Uh, and uh, as you do uh, catch yeah. up with him, you watch as he kind of pauses for a second, turns around and goes, uh, well, um, uh, hey there, little lady. Uh, how can I how can I help you out? Actually, sorry, I I'm heard... going to give him a bogan. He needs a bogan Aussie accent. Sorry, I forgot he's an earthbender. <laughs> oh, hey there, little lady. Uh, how can I help you out? I heard that you might have some interesting information that you've got your head on your shoulders. Is that right? Uh, heads on shoulders, and uh, I keep my eyes peeled and look out for things that uh, might look a bit off. I'm not sure I've seen some things out in the forest. Uh, are you really here to, like, officially investigate what's going on? Uh, I'm just the assistant, but dude over there, that one who, like, touched your hand all weird, he wants to chat to you if that's okay. Oh, um, he, like, looks out. Uh, do, I, do I look okay? Is, that, is what I'm wearing okay? Do I need to, like, get into nicer clothes? If it's, Hang like, on, a be, come, formal interview or, like... Bend down here. Bend down here. He, like, leans down. I lick my thumb, but then in my hand, I still have charcoal. Yeah. So I swipe the charcoal and I like brush it across his forehead as if I'm getting rid of some dirt. Oh, you look you're great. an asshole. Off you go. <laughs> Could you roll me a trick an NPC, please, to see how, how good you go with this? I want to see how, because this guy did just say, yeah, I, I've got a good head on my shoulders. My eyes are peeled. I want to see if he notices. This is great. An eight. <laughs> and eight, he like, he rubs at his forehead and for a second you think he's going to notice. And then he like takes his hand away and goes like, oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, I can stop my hands. Um, right. Um, did I need to, uh, um, do I just go and talk to him now or like, what, what do I do? Yeah. Yeah. No, just go chat to him. He just wants to know about the mysterious people that you've been like seeing and stuff. Right. And um, you, you're not. You're not wandering off into the forest area by yourself, are you? No, I came over here to get you. Oh, stupid. okay. Sorry. Yep. Great. I, I, please lead on. Sorry. Yep. Cool. I skip and I grab his hand 
yeah, and nice. I skip and I like lead him with me. And then when he doesn't skip with me, you have to skip. Sorry, what? You you have to skip. So see how I'm doing this like step, hop, step, hop with my feet. You have to do that or you're not allowed to get interviewed. But, <laughs> it's very official business. But, um, okay. Um, uh, I've never really like. It's uh, really easy. Look, you just step, hop, step, hop. Uh, he he does so. Um, after a few step hops, uh, he accidentally earth bends a little bit and shoots himself up in the air like an extra like <laughs> like five feet, and then like stumbles as he hits the ground and like catches himself, and then looks up, face reddening as he looks towards the desk, making sure Kiko hasn't seen him. Kiko, at this point, you're like water bending water into your flask. You're just like having a great time, and then without you, like as he sees you, haven't noticed, hasn't noticed. You're like, oh. um, sorry. Okay, a little less oomph. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Oh, I've still got a lot to learn about earthbending. Um, are you a are you an earthbender? God no, no, no. What do you, what do you mean, God? Oh, okay, yeah, we'll skip. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Let's go. <laughs> um, so we're just skipping towards Kiko, and he's got a massive line of charcoal across yeah, his yeah, forehead. Yeah. As as he lets go of your hand at the end of this, he looks down at his hand and goes, "Why is my hand all black?" <laughs> like wipes it off. <laughs> um, Kiko. Uh, Gemi comes back and sits in front of you. There is like a, a half moon crescent of black charcoal across his forehead. You can see Poppy barely <laughs> holding it together as as he sits down in front of you and like straightens up his clothes, gives you like a nervous chuckle and a wave, and he goes, "Um, you got some." Wait, got some... sorry. As we approach, yeah. I'm gonna yell out to Kiko and say, "Kiko, I got Gimme!" So that he looks up and sees us skipping. Yeah, I also <laughs> just like sit on a nice. water bottle, also sat down. I'm like, ah, I'm about to adjust my pants, get comfy, and then I look up and like. <laughs> grab, my little, grab my little map thing. I'm like just tapping the one sheet of map on the table. <laughs> just like straighten up a little bit. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Welcome, welcome. Hi, um, I'm, uh, I'm I'm Gemi. And he like goes to do the handshake that you showed him before. Yeah. Like straight up, just like already anticipating. Like, yeah. You learn quick. You're, a good, you're good at that. You should teach this to everyone. All the little kids and everything. I appreciate you taking the time, um, Kim. G- gimme. 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 gimme, gimme, that's right. No, gimme. gimme. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, you, if you'd like, you can uh, sit on this poppy if you want to be part of the interview, or if you want to go find more people, like completely up to you. No, nah, I'm you good. Go. I got some. I've got some rats to go squash. Be right back. And I skip off. Go squash the rats. And what would they be? What are they? Rats. Nah. What are they? No, no, no. I'm saying like the bog rats. rats. I'm gonna go find the bog rat kid. Oh, the bog rats. Yeah, fair. <laughs> But to him, I'm not going to say that. I'm just going to say I've got some go- I've got some rats to go squish. So, I the word rats would mean nothing to you. Bog rats, you would know. Um, they, like he has. Uh, it's so not, is bog rat like an actual? Like, bog rats like a hybrid thing? animal okay. from yeah, yeah. It's like a hybrid, yeah, okay. hybrid animal. I've got it's some like a, bog rats to go squish then. Imagine, imagine like a long, elongated rat with slug-like kind of. Uh, appearance. Oh, you're disgusting. <laughs> It's funny what small pleasures bring me, bring me great Jesus. joy. And this is one of them. Um, <laughs> it makes me happy. This makes me really, really happy. Um, the more I disturb Andrew, the happier I am with my hybrid animals. Yeah. Um, this is every session. Yeah. <laughs> As Kiko, as you sit across from, from Gemi, he kind of like smiles in a little bit of like a dorky way and then shakes his head and goes, um, sorry, uh, do you want me to just tell you what I saw or like had... How, how, how do we do? I've never been interviewed before. Oh, this is your first. I'm oh, blessed to be your first interviewer, and you are, uh, remember this one, the interviewee. This is, yeah, I remember that. It's not important. Anyway, um, no, I appreciate it. Um, I guess, like, yeah, should start off with, like, oh, God, what's it? Uh, Zulo said this happened, like, a week ago. Uh, like, is that I, right? I, I wasn't the first to see them. Uh, there were a couple of others who noticed them first. I saw them probably, like, five days ago. Um, Five days ago. Yeah, yeah. So the fir- the first report, I-, I mean, I can't even remember who it was who first said they'd seen figures moving through the woods, but we kind of like discounted it, right? Like people talk about all sorts of crazy stuff, like platypus bears in the edge of the forest, um, sky bison wandering the skies when it's just clouds. I mean, like people say all sorts of stuff, and and, and when the woods That's- get dark and shadows come across, you see things that aren't there. So we kind of discounted it, but then uh, probably about five days ago, so two days after the first report, I. I- I thought I saw someone like running low through the underbrush at the edge of the forest and I called out and like I could hear them stop for a moment 
and then I heard the rustling of a bush and then they ran off. And then when I got there, there was like a fragment of cloth, this like dark brown dyed cloth. But it was weird because it was like a bit mottled as well. Like someone had, I don't know, like tried to mix a couple of dyes together to make like this sort of weird pattern of just greens and browns and things like that. Um, Yeah, it's cloth. Yeah, I thought it was like a leaf at first, but then I, I mean, I got lucky, um, which told me someone had been there and I, it wasn't a spirit or anything like that because spirit, spirits don't wear shirts, right? Like, <laughs> he laughs a little bit. I don't know. I was, I don't, do spirits wear shirts? I'm going to write that down. It may not be important to the investigation, but <laughs> not ruling anything out here, okay, uh, Gibby? Anyway, I, I brought that back and then and, and Zula saw it and, and she was a little bit worried, but, but, I mean, we, we didn't think it would be anything serious, right? Like, we're, we're a small farming community here. We haven't got anything that, like, a big Daofei group would want or anything like that. But then the reports started coming in from the farms. I mean, my, um, my cousin, um, he and his wife and their, their, their kids, um, they, they live on a farm just, just out over the end of the hill. And, and they had, like, six acts of, of, of vegetables and, and, and grain taken just in the night. The barn was broken into. Everything was taken and they didn't hear or see anything. See no evil, hear no evil. I mean, no one's, so what I'm hearing, like, this has been going on for the past week. So, the theft started look, probably like four or five, I mean, well, three or four, three or four days ago, I think the first one started, because like it, it was like the, the day or the day after I, I reported it to Zula. But they're stealing Zula. like supplies. Supplies. Yeah. Not only gold stolen. I don't I think, heard that, um, I don't think most people have gold here the highest denomination of coin we see here is like copper or silver that makes it even more peculiar i mean like even uh what was his name toka was it toka yeah Toka. he was robbed well but... and he kind of pulls a face but uh is, is he someone telling porkies toka sure. said <sighs> toka's Toka, in his time, I heard, was a great guard. Like, he served in the, in the Royal Barsing Se Guards. Um, but on a raid against the Dao Fei, apparently he got injured. Um, something, something with his head. He got like someone earthbended stuff onto him. And he wasn't a bender. And it took him a couple of days to dig him out of the rubble, like a day or two, I think. And, and he's been really jumpy ever since. I mean, that's why he came out here and, and, and lives in this very peaceful farming community. I, I think he was... And he like leans in and whispers, retired. Um, yeah. Retired. Okay. So he, he yeah. sees, like he sees stuff and, and I mean, so, I don't want to, I don't want to talk badly about him. He's a great guy. Lovely guy. I mean, he taught me a little bit of how to use the Guan Dao. I, I'm always going to be grateful for that, but he's jumpy. And Jump. if he saw something, it doesn't mean he actually saw something, if you know what I mean. And there was no gotcha. scraps or anything. I mean, I saw that weird thing out the back of his house and he's not an earthbender and that looks like someone did some earthbending. So that kind of makes me think maybe there was something, but I mean, the kids, right? A couple of them are part of this gang called the Bog Rats or something. They, they've heard about this. It's made them really like excited. They think something's finally happening in this small town. I wouldn't put it past one of the kids to have played a prank on him. And it, they were the ones who did that. Cause like, it's pretty basic earthbending, just making a little, bunch up a stone. Like anyone can do that. Well, if you're a waterbender. <laughs> a waterbender's water with the mouth. You drink it. So um <laughs> He like he like looks on eyes wide as you do this because wow that's <laughs> that's so cool. Oh would you like some? <laughs> he like <laughs> Here comes the train. <laughs> This is so beautifully awkward. He like, he like goes like, ha, ha. like splash water at him. He's like, oh, um, refreshing. Thanks. He's like wipes it off his face. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah, you don't have to worry about dirty water. Um, okay. That is so beautifully awkward. This is like yeah, like Lady of the Tramp. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> he like wipes a bit of water off his face goes, yeah, yeah I, I mean I feel refreshed <laughs> it was hot I'm, I'm nice and cool now thank you nah, any, t- any time no this most I can do for you taking this interview like I feel like we've got a fair bit out of this here 
anything else do you think I should know about this here? Because we've covered kids potentially like leaving like trails and playing with an old man who's a bit lost in his thoughts. Where it sort of clarified that people see stuff out in like the dark all the time. You mentioned something about the the bison's flying over the top. Don't rule that out. Oh, it's probably true. I, There's I, always uh, air spies, most likely yeah, um, leaving chemtrails. Not ruling it out. What are, what are chemtrails? Um, don't worry about it. Um, but that's <laughs> <laughs> once again, yeah, that's once again Brandon <laughs> spreading conspiracy theories on our <laughs> in the world of Avatar. <laughs> Yeah, what is, there. Why is it your characters always find find a way to spread like crackpot conspiracy <laughs> theories? <laughs> what is it? It's just, anytime I can Alex Jones in a campaign, I'm like, that chemicals in the water. <laughs> I, well, Alex Jones is enough. We don't need more characters like him. Yeah. <laughs> he does. There's already one is too many. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If anything, less of him would be good. <laughs> Uh, but aside from that, like, I feel like I've covered a lot here, Gimme. Like, this is good stuff here. I'll take this back for research. Anything I should know before I'll let you get back to work. Uh, thanks. I, yeah, if I think of anything or if, uh, if anyone else uh, knows anything, I'll, I'll get him and I'll get him to come talk to you. Then I'll, I'll, uh, okay. I'll come back and um, should I, like, um, no, 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 yeah, thanks. You're like, Looks like he was going to say something else, and then like smiles and stands up and like goes oh, to do oh, the hand the high, high five again. Yeah, as as he does that, I reach uh, back and I pull him a little pocket, I pull out like a silver piece, and like I give him some skin one more time as I slide the silver piece into his yeah. fist bump, and I'm like, "Sorry, you were about to say something." <laughs> uh, I, I can't, I can't take this. Oh, you can take that. Just like you, like you, just on the tip of something right there. I can, Sense it. No, no, I can't. I, I, I can't take this. You, no, no, no. You're working for the. You're working for the Avatar. I can't. I can't. I can't take this. It's a gift from the Avatar. It's. I get a. I get a dowry. I can share from time to time. It's fine. Don't worry about you it. You get a dowry. Yeah. Are you. Uh. Don't think too much. Like, of it. What were you going to Really <laughs> confused by that. <laughs> looks at the golden goes. Like, oh, so I. Sorry, I didn't know you were married. Yes, exactly. Wait, you're married? <laughs> His work. <laughs> I'll write down my notes. Um, <laughs> learn what the word dowry means. <laughs> <laughs> How, uh, he like closes his hand on the fist and like, uh, yeah, I just, I just seem young to be married. And, and multiple times you said you get a, like a regular dowry? <laughs> Water tribe stuff. Oh. Yeah, yeah, trust me, you grew up in the wrong nation. Hmm. Oh, um... D d all the right one depends who you ask. Does he, he like, see him writing it down? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nods, and then, like, puts the coin away, and, like, nods again, looking really confused, and then wanders off back towards the uh, the lumber yard. Oh. <laughs> under, under, <laughs> under, under my breath. I'm gonna have to get Poppy to steal that silver piece back. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is this twist? Why are you bullying this man? He loves you. He loves you. Love you. Does he not know what a reverse bribe is? God, oh, these people. <laughs> a reverse bribe? I don't know what a reverse bribe is. <laughs> when you take money off them and to get them to make That's theft. That's called stealing. A reverse bribe is theft. When you take money from someone else, that's theft. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was paying him for information. It's different. That's, that's, well, bribery. that's, that's, that's just bribery. bribery. It's not reverse bribery. <laughs> that's, that's a bribery if you're a civilian. <laughs> Is it bribery if it's between friends? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh my god. Okay, so it went great. All right. Christ, I don't know how to unpack that. Um, Ted and Jed, I guess we'll jump back with you guys before we wrap up. Um, what would the two of you be doing? Um, I made a roll before. Yeah. And assess the situation. Absolute success. That's roll um, with control. No, that's me. Oh, that was you. Ignore my rolls. Ignore my rolls. I rolled Jed was crazy. seven success with consequences. No, that was still Andrew. I'm Ted. Eight success with consequences. I had to go down the list a little bit. Yeah. I could have um, also looked to my left, which is way less further away, and it's right there. Or I could have looked right there, and I would have got the information. But no, I chose to look at the screen furthest away from my eyeline. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. It's fine. There's no rules here. 
No, there um, are. There are rules. And I'm the one who has to keep monitoring. <laughs> we, um, we, we just watched Brandon terribly flirt <laughs> with a guy for the past 20 minutes. There are no rules. <laughs> That was incredible. Him, I, I just didn't flirt. I got information. Um, I got part of me, part of me, part of me wonders, like, is this Will what Ali had to go up? through when you guys first started dating? Because, like, yeah. how how on earth did that come across as you showing interest? Because it's really, <laughs> you're like, damn, I gotta get that, I gotta get that that dinner back that I fed her somehow. <laughs> she didn't tell me information. <laughs> I'll reverse bribe her later. <laughs> Just like go through a computer, <laughs> delete a whole bunch of files. That's ah. why I'm in her. That's why I'm in her office right now. Yeah, <laughs> it's a long play. It's been the long con. It's been a decade in the making. Um, Ted, assess the situation. What's your question? Um, we were talking about uh, the potential of uh, Sky Bison's. Yes. Uh, you you were. Any sky bison's around? As Can you I look around, it? there's no sky bison's. Like, there, there's a cloud like for a moment. Like, there's a big fluffy cloud that looks like it would be as soft to hug as a sky bison, but there's it's just no, a like, cloud. Presence, like old presence of a sky bison being around. There's no anything. signs of any fur. I mean, Ted, you're an air nomad. I'm just quite, checking, bro. Quite a, quite a moderately enlightened one, I would say. Pretty smart. Pretty smart. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> um... <laughs> I mean, as 50% of the brothers dim, um, you know that sky bison normally go where air nomads want them if it's outside of their normal nesting grounds or outside of their normal feeding grounds, which means that an airbender has has guided them to a location. And as you look about, you see nothing here that any air nomad would be interested in ever. Yeah, no, this is not a site of great spiritual significance. This is a tiny farming community at the edge of a forest between two much more important, much larger villages that will eventually one day swallow this tiny farm community and leave nothing behind but ruins. Hey, Jed. Yo. I don't think there's a sky bison here. Really? Yeah, I think there was something else. Ooh, what do you think it was? I didn't get that far. That's, that's fair. Let me think about it for a second. I'm, work, I'm working on it. I'm thinking. Give me a sec. <laughs> it's really... You can tell he's thinking because it's perfectly silent and you can see the the beanie begin to overheat a little bit. <laughs> it's like a little fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What if it was the rake gang? I'm still convinced that it was... It was the, uh... The dude that we saw. To the dude that we saw? Toka. The old man. No, the old no, 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 the, no, 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 the merchant. The merchant. Beetle. 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 Pretty sure it was Beetle. As, as you guys are kind of like standing around out the back of this man's house, looking at a pile of rocks and loudly commenting on just random shit, uh, <laughs> you watch as the old man <laughs> pokes his head out the window and goes, Are you not really what was sent from, from the Avatar? I... I was. That's disappointing. You lot aren't going to figure shit out. Neither are you. <laughs> I'll have you know, I was a member of the guards in Ba Sing Se. I solved crimes. I know what did this. I've already figured it out. What did oh, I? Oh. It was. <laughs> like, what are you doing? You're like getting into position to like listen. Yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I'm getting the roll ready just in case. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. <I'm wrong. laughs> As you, as you like really begin focusing on his words, he like looks and goes, was a spirit, an evil dark spirit. What can bend and burrow? An earthbender? No, no earthbender would have bested me. Would we, we would have knowledge of badger moles, right? Oh, oh, how do I tell? What Jed do I and Ted, yeah, you would, you yeah, would know that badger moles exist. You might not know how big they are, though. So actually, that is a legitimate question. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. That's actually a fair point. I rolled intimidate. Intimidate. <laughs> Eight with consequences. What are you trying to intimidate him into? Like, how, how are you intimidating? And what are you trying to achieve? Intimidating him into believing that it was not a spirit. And how are you intimidating him with that? I want to give me, give me some details. I just want to yell at him. Yeah, what do you want to <laughs> yell at him? 
it wasn't a spirit, you old insane man. <laughs> like, this, this, this clearly wasn't a spirit. I don't, I, <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't understand how you got to a spirit. Like, clearly, <laughs> your senile age, you have gone mad. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, I don't know. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's the elderly. Together. The elderly just fill me with this rage <laughs> I can't suppress. <laughs> Pull it together, Ted. It had to be done. I, I, no, no living man or woman or bender alive could take me at my prime. Nah, only could have no, been a spirit. Your prime. <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> He like closes the window and you hear the sound of like rustling from inside the house. And then as he emerges from behind, he like stomps up to you. What did you say? You were clearly, anyone can see you are not is, in your prime. Is he holding his giant? No, he doesn't have his guan down. He, like, he yeah. like shakes his head and goes, I could take you right now. Probably, but you're not in your prime. Well, then it could only have been a spirit. Calm down guys. Everyone just, just calm oh, down. Or an, or a young earthbender. Are you, if you try and tell me it was those fucking kids again, I'll earth bend you a new pair of shoes. I don't wear shoes. Uh, you, you, you do. You're an <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but you do wear shoes. Do they? Yes. Yeah. Oh. It's only earth benders who don't. They wear like slipper style shoes. Yeah. Oh, sick. I'd say oh. it's in your character art, but your character art doesn't go below your chest. Yeah, I can't so. see my feet. Can't see your feet. Tall, they tall. don't exist. As you look down, it's just a torso that ends in nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, my legs! I haven't been finished. <laughs> <laughs> um. So he thinks it's a spirit. Interesting. We're gonna have to find some spirits. I couldn't there. resist baiting Andrew with a spirit. Just, it's just really a little well. bait, just to. Well, Adam. I think I slap Jed. You slap Jed. <laughs> yeah. What's that for? Just like a, just like just a in case. <laughs> I, I, why, answer me this. If it wasn't a spirit, why do they send an airbender, huh? The, the, they didn't send it. They didn't, no, 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 no. The Avatar sent an airbender to oh, fix no, the problem. That part of a team. There's like other... There's like yeah, but why around. would you have an airbender if it weren't a spirit? What are you going to oh, do? Yeah. Meditate at an earthbender to get him to stop hurling rocks at you? Well, Ask no, a firebender yeah. nicely not to set you alight. No, no, no. If you've got an airbender... Because it's spiritual up. shit. Just beat up the all the bases. Beat up the beat up the earthbender. Beat up the fire. You're not an airbender. You don't understand. As he talks to you, Jed, he looks back at Ted. No, no, no. <laughs> if they if they send an airbender, it's because it's a spirit. But they okay. sent they We're also good. sent a waterbender. We're good. Well, in case it's a, a, a in case it's something that needs washing away. They also sent a child to appease the spirit as bait. <laughs> Everyone knows then, spirits don't kill children. And then this guy. Yeah, I don't know what you're here for, mate. He looks at you, Jed. See, so clearly there's reason. That it, there's the only thing reason. that would prove it was more a spirit to me was if they sent two airbenders, not one. <laughs> <laughs> if they sent two, two, that's a guarantee. One who million percent. Two airbenders? Someone um, who wants yeah. to deal with a spirit. <laughs> I like how he's like Alex Jones, this dude. <laughs> I, I, you baited I think me. He's... You baited me, Brandon. I've changed the entire character because you baited me. I think he's half right. <laughs> Which part? <laughs> no, I bet none of that. Wrong. About none of that. Like, oh. I think it's like spirit related. Like, I think it's just badger mole, maybe. Did you say that? I don't have... Yeah. He <laughs> looks down at the tiny pile of earth and goes. I was about to call you a bloody idiot, son. But young badger moles, they're not that big. I, and they, have you, they're have hungry. You they sometimes go after food. But why would it come after my old hut? Did you have food? No. Well, I mean, yeah, but not like sacks of food, not barrels of food, just enough for me dinner. And it didn't... Whatever it was that attacked me in my home, I didn't really get a good look at it. But it, it didn't go after me food. What did it go after? Me. Went after me. And me trusty Guandao. Did it want to hide out of... I was what, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> you go, Ted. You go. Uh, I was like, and you're made out of... Muscle. <laughs> well, <laughs> mostly sinew these days. 
<laughs> Mostly gristle. <laughs> Interesting. I don't think anyone would eat that. No. But what's... Wait. On the... On his weapon, though, you said there was like a red flourish or whatever? There is. Red feathers at the top. What are they... Feathers. What would they come from? From the thing uh, I've seen. You can ask him. Yeah. The... the your weapon. Yeah. The Gwandao. It was deco it decorated with something. Feathers. From... A... Lightning Bork. Okay. Now you're going to have... To... Okay, yep, yep, okay. Do, do you, you think... What, you think it went after me weapon? What well, did. Well, I... Let me... Hang on, let me get the guan if you... You're not as... You're not as dim as you look, mate. Give me a moment. He heads back inside and then a moment later comes out with the guan down. And as he holds it aloft, yeah, you can see that around the... Uh, around the blade, where the blade joins onto the shaft, there's a number of uh, feathers that have been tied in place. Would they... Pre like... Would they be predators? So, Jed, you would know that the Fire Nation often use messenger hawks, which are ember hawks, um, to, to send messages long distances. They have these bright red plume tails. Um, for an Earth Nation soldier to have ember hawk feathers adorning his Guandao, that does seem a little bit unusual. It's not unusual. I think, I think, I think that's a good place to wrap up for tonight, because I've that's a good point to potentially bring in our guest next week so i think we'll wrap up there with you and with jed and ted kind of like stumbling around the dumb and dumber um <laughs> <laughs> like yeah Sherlock um, and watson if you ask enough questions one of them's gonna be right <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> <laughs> so there's a dartboard and we're just Huh. Just we are hitting the wall. There's a dartboard, and you're currently throwing Maltesers at it. So I mean, you get there eventually. <laughs> um, something's got to stick. Something's got to stick. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. It's been wonderful to have you uh, have you come along for our journey once more. That is where we're going to wrap up for tonight. We will introduce our lovely guest character next week, and we will have the uh, the character up launching for that pretty soon. So keep an eye out on the socials. But until then. That is all for us tonight. Stay safe, stay well, and we'll see you all again really, really soon. Until then, everybody, goodbye! Bye! 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 Bye, -bye.